Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Telstra Friday Night Countdown. 198 home and away games, six finals, just four teams left in the 2017 season. All chasing the one prize. Simple equation this weekend. Win and play in the last game of the season. The game for all the marbles. So it's the Giants and the Tigers at the MCG tomorrow night. They're on the agenda. It is the Crows hosting the Cats tonight. Can Trent Cotchin take Richmond to the promised land? We talk about the Brownlow. Can anyone stop Dusty? What a season he has had. Is it better than Dusty's last year? Probably. Is it better than Danger's last year? Probably. He's the shortest prize favourite. We'll get to Sam McClure. We'll find out what Bruce has loved. But what South Australia is loving right now is the Adelaide Oval. You cannot buy a ticket. Sold up sign went out earlier in the week. 53,698. The record here at the Adelaide Oval. Will it be beaten tonight? Who knows? But the Crows are superb in the first final here against the Giants. And if you ordered a night for football, you ordered what we've been delivered tonight. Wayne Carey, Cameron Link, it's prelim final night. You get a chance to live out a boy who dream if you win tonight or season over. Yeah, what an unbelievable day for footy. Incredible weather here and the people are mowing their lawns. You can smell the clippings. For the first time this year, it smells like finals. I love preliminary final weekend. It's the best weekend in yeah. football. The four best teams going at it. There's a true football crowd tonight at the Adelaide Oval, tomorrow at the MCG. Absolutely packed out. And look, there's the crowd pouring into the Adelaide Oval tonight. Brilliant weekend for footy, home. I Can you tell them a little bit excited? Everyone's excited. Everyone yeah. you spoke to today, when we got off the planes, who are you going for? How is it going to play out? Buses have been dropping off Geelong fans throughout the city all throughout the afternoon. What we understand is the buses have come over. Everyone's got off. They've had a coffee. They've had something to eat. They'll watch the game. They can go straight back. back tonight. The Cats convoy, absolutely. But there'll be plenty of Adelaide supporters in the house as well. And the record so far this year, split either way and going with the home team. Have a look at the margins there. I mean, could it be any more even? One apiece. And the Crows would have got real confidence from that win in round 18. They played a great brand of football that night. It was tough, it was hard, and they really know it. Coming into tonight, that'll stand them in good stead. And that margin for the Crows probably flattered. Harry Taylor kicked yeah. four late and really... The they dominated, yeah. didn't they, Adelaide? Yeah, absolutely they did. So, I oh, look... Uh, Honestly, it's a toss of the coin for me tonight. This is going to be an absolute ripper. We've been looking at key players throughout the week of the finals. Duck, where are you going to start tonight? You've got a few players. You've got a question mark around. Yeah, look, Rory Sloan for me. Obviously, he's had his illness. He's only hasn't played a lot of footy of recent times, but he's an absolute star. We know that he got tagged earlier in the year, and those players that tagged him did a reasonable job. I reckon in the second part of the year, he got better at handling that. He got a little little bit more aggressive. He was the aggressor rather than let the tagger be the aggressor towards him. And he's a little bit of a concern over Talia and also the captain, Tex Walker. Now, I mentioned Rory Sloan only playing one game in, in uh, over 30 days. So have those two players. So are they going to be sharp? Are they going to be unbelievably fresh? That's the big question mark for me. Well, that links in nicely with my man that I'm watching, and that is Tex Walker, the skipper. I know you wrote about him today and the fact that he can elevate his game with a big game tonight and possibly one next week. He set the tone in that round 18 game. I remember him being especially aggressive at the Geelong players, getting in their face, stirring it up. You can tell the Adelaide players get in behind him. So when the nerves are high with a couple of the young players, they'll be looking towards Tex to set the example. You spoke about uh, Rory Sloan. I reckon a man that might be with him at times tonight is Mark Blitzarves. He took Josh Kennedy out of the game last Friday night. Yep. He played that third man up role for a long time. He's finding his feet as an AFL footballer. New string to his bow last weekend. 20 possessions for Kennedy only and smothered him throughout the night. Absolutely. He was at, at his absolute best last week. He played a terrific game. I reckon just the last few weeks starting to get back to the best and fairest form of a few years ago. Uh, he, Rory Sloan possibility, Matty Crouch possibility, but I think Tom Lynch. Home. You mentioned this earlier today. You think that he is so influential that they may send Blitzarves to him. He's the link man, covers the ground unbelievably well. Blitzarves has got the running power to stay with him. Absolutely. Time for a break. We'll speak with Don Pike here at the desk in just a moment. Is the Crows hosting the Cats for an opportunity to play in the last game of the season. They're expecting 53,000 and the weather for football is perfect. Welcome back to the Telstra Friday Night Countdown. I so wish that the viewers were on about 25 seconds ago because your side just came out for their first warm-up. 
Felt like they just won a grand final. <laughs> oh, we've got uh, 50 odd thousand fans going to rock in here and they're going to make some noise. I can think. you imagine the noise when this place is full tonight for these players? Yeah, I think I can. I've heard it a few times throughout the year and uh, it's great to have that home support, but that's one of the benefits you get from uh, home prelim. Just in terms of the prelim final, I mean, you've been here as a player, you haven't been here as a coach. How do you give the players your experience? Oh, it's probably less about my experience and more about just the opportunity they've created. I mean, the guys have worked really hard and, you know, they've, they've won a, a final two weeks ago, giving themselves a chance to play their way into a grand final. So, yeah, you know, there's excitement that goes with that. And from my viewpoint, it's more just staying, you know, true to who we are and how we want to play and making sure we bring, uh, we bring what we need to bring to them um, to challenge Geelong. You saw what Blixarves did last week. You know Selwood will have a tagging job somewhere. Have you got a plan for the, if those guys do go to Sloan or one of them goes to Lynch? Do you have a contingency? Yeah, look, we expect that's probably likely. Yeah. It, it seems that the feedback came out of Geelong last week. They felt more comfortable with Blixavs playing off a man. Um, and in, in that last last week, it was Kennedy. So whether it's a Sloan or whether it's a Matt Crouch, we'll wait and see. But, um, yeah, we've got, at a certain point, we've got to back your guys in as well to get it done 1v1. Don, we've noticed how the finals, apart from the game that was here, Port Adelaide and West Coast, they've all been blowouts, the yeah. games. Have you got a read on why that's happening? Uh, Are teams just breaking other teams quicker than expected? Well, it's interesting because the season's been so close. It's been really weird, the final series, when you look at the, the results. So um, oh, hopefully tonight it's another one and it's <laughs> on our way. But, um, you know, we, we, we come prepared and expect, as all preliminary finals are, uh, they're a tight battle. With McGovern out, does Otten play forward? Yeah, look, Otto will play a bit of forward for us. We think uh, you know, we weight up whether we go taller or smaller in that role. And again, we just felt that uh, from a flexibility viewpoint, Otto gives us that, you know, he can, he can, he can also play back, yeah. which, uh, which means that we do run into some other issues, uh, either injury or performance, we've, uh, we've got some flexibility. Where do you think Paddy Dangerfield lines up? I'd say he's uh, on the ground, but I'm not sure. To what are you honest. preparing for? Uh, look, I think for a bit of both. We, we, you know, again, it's one of those things we don't get our players too worried about it. They understand that if he goes forward, then we'll rotate around and we'll get our matchups right down there. If he plays the midfielder, then they'll, they'll adjust. So, um, yeah, we're prepared for both scenarios and we'll leave it with Geelong as to how they want to start the game. Last year, we saw the two teams that got straight away through to the prelim final lose. I think you spent a little bit of time at the Gold Coast yeah. last week, tried a few things differently. I'm sure you're confident that you've prepared the best you possibly can, but will you be able to tell five or ten minutes in whether or not that extra buy, that extra rest has had a negative or positive impact? Yeah, look, we don't know. I mean, obviously last year we, we weren't part of it, but we were able to sit and look at the two teams who did go straight through, and, and we felt our best preparation was to do what we did, which was spend some time up there, probably mentally and physically refresh the guys a little bit, um, which was great. But then probably our training, we've, we've trained on fairly strongly. We haven't sort of gone into the just sort of rest and recover and get ready for the prelim. We've, we've, we've done some pretty heavy competitive work so that we're prepared for what is going to be a, you know, a fierce opening to a, a prelim final. Given the weather tonight, that's probably a little bit of a bonus. So you were able to go up there and train in a little bit of heat because it's a very balmy night tonight. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. So, uh, you know, we've had a few wet and windy days here in, uh, in Adelaide this year, but tonight's going to be a great night for footy and can't wait for it. Enjoy the next half hour before things crank up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All the best. Well done. Thanks, guys. Let me take that from you. Perfect. Don Pike, hard to imagine what is going through his head right now. Half an hour before, basically, his team begins battle. They've either got the most extraordinary week leading into a grand final, or like so many other sides, they're done. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting that all coaches that have played in grand finals and finals, they all say, as a coach, you've got no control. As a player, you've at least got control how you're going to go about yep. it on the field. So... Very two different feelings completely. Agree. What about the Toyota keys to the game tonight here? You're going to focus, I think, on the Cats destroying the Crows party? Yeah, look, uh, look for the Cats, obviously contested footy. When they played the Tigers a couple of weeks ago, they were nine, negative 19. And then last week against Sydney, plus 25 in that area. So that has to be their focus. So if they get that right, they're a big chance of winning this game. And for me, with the, the Crows home, if Geelong, even if Geelong do get that right, it's down back for the Crows. Don't panic. We saw last week when Paddy Dangerfield went forward, Rampy went to him. We felt as though the whole Swan structure got pulled out of place. The Crows back on, just stay calm, just calmly work through the matchups they want. Jake Lever might get Paddy Dangerfield when he's deep. Talia will go to Hawkins. Just be calm down there. So if you stay calm, you can go back to playing on instinct. If you're panicking and worrying and your structure gets pulled apart, then Geelong will have the advantage. How much does final experience count tonight? Only six Crows have played yeah. in the prelim. It's an interesting one. We, well, we saw a couple of weeks ago the Tigers didn't have too many either and they played the way they did. So, yeah. look, at the end of the day, you're not thinking about doing the big things. You've got to come here with a real focus about doing the basics really, really well. I think if you do that, you don't get overawed. Shouldn't be dreaming of kicking a big goal or taking a big mark. 
I reckon the second final is easier. We spoke to Don Pike during the ad break. I said, are you more, more nervous for the prelim or the first final? He said, I was edgier a couple of weeks ago. Well, he felt that that first final really could set them up, and, and it does. You win those qualifying finals, you're just sitting back and you're watching the others beat the hell out of each other, which is nice. But I was going to say, once this siren, uh, the siren goes in the first bounce, the nerves will come back. The prelim final, best weekend in footy. Bruce is coming in just a moment. We're expecting 53,000 tonight. Extraordinary. Telstra Plaza is full of fans trying to get into the game. Right now, there are thousands of Telstra customers streaming tonight's game on Australia's best mobile network. More speed, it's faster. Telstra, proud to take AFL to the fans. Bruce is next. We're expecting 95,000 plus tomorrow night at the MCG in the Adelaide Oval. 53,000 and change. Great shot from the Virgin Australia chopper. Wonderful to have Virgin Australia a part of Channel 7's coverage. And we welcome in Bruce McAvaney as we do every Friday night. And Bruce, I just get a sense that the mood of the city right now is one of excitement, but nervous apprehension. Absolutely, Haim. Hey, everywhere I've been, been this week, everyone has said we're getting more nervous as the days go on. I mean, there's so much at stake. There's so much commitment from this state to this team and from Geelong people as well. It's one of those games, you know there's no tomorrow. The loser, you feel like they've been out for a month and they've been out for an hour tonight and the winner goes to the biggest game of them all. So it doesn't get any better than that in terms of a knife's edge and that's what we've got here tonight. And so cruel, Mitch McGovern and Brody Smith. So yep. Brody Smith, an ACL in the first final and Mitch McGovern, a hamstring in the practice match. Absolutely. And that was one of the things you had Don Pike on a moment ago. And Don said, we did some pretty hard training. They had a hard practice match last week and McGovern was a casualty of that. And who knows if he'll come up if they win tonight. They hopefully will. At the moment, I think it's probably 50-50 if they win tonight. OK, let's just leave the prelims for the moment. Monday night, the Brownlow. Yeah. At this point of the year, you are analysing every player, every step. How do you have the top three? Look, it's more which games won't Dusty get a vote in than yep. which games he will at the moment. That's just the sort of season he's had. So I think it's impossible that Martin and Dangerfield won't be the top two vote getters. Now, Paddy can't win it, we know that, but I still think Dusty will get more votes than Paddy. So I think Dangerfield will be handing the medal to Dusty. And I think Tom Mitchell, who's had 12 votes in each of the last two years, is likely to get around 25. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Martin breaks the 35 record of Dangerfield from last year. Lee Matthews said perhaps a 40-vote season. Is that possible? I think so. I mean, he, he's just had, from round one, where he had the big match against Richmond, it's just been consistently outstanding. So it would be a surprise, a big shock, in a season of shocks, if he's beaten on Monday night. OK. I always ask you, what have you loved from the week? I'm going to ask you what you love from the prelim finals. Well, Paddy, but... Stevie J. Look, I'm a bit of a, you know, I'm an old timer, aren't I? And, and for the genius to turn it back one time. Now, at half time, I sat there, home thinking, he needs two goals to play next week. He got six. Now, it might be a bit of fool's gold. I don't care. I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't the hardest half of foot he's ever played in his life. But you know what? Look at this. Look at this. He's given us one more little chapter in what is one of the most remarkable books in Australian footy. I just loved it. And whatever, even if he doesn't, there's some thought he mightn't play on the weekend. But if he plays in the grand final, then uh, I, he's given us one glorious exit by doing that last weekend. It's extraordinary what is going to happen this week and next weekend. Paddy is going to play against the Crows and trying to stop them getting into the grand final. <laughs> Delidio plays his 250. That's remarkable, isn't it? And tries to stop the Tigers <laughs> from getting in. And if Stevie J wins, he might just play the Cats in a grand final in his final oh, game. It's crazy. Is that absolutely crazy. And, Haim, I've been to a lot of grand finals at this ground. I used to sleep out on the northern uh, gates and rush in and watch Sturt play Port Adelaide and Norwood play Port Adelaide and all those finals over the years. But this is as big as it gets. This is our grand final now in South Australia. We've got the new Adelaide Oval. I mean, look at this. This is the captain. This is the team coming off the ground. It doesn't get any bigger than this for this city. It is just the most amazing build-up. And maybe if Port Adelaide were playing, it would be a smidgen bigger. But the fact that it's Geelong and it's Dangerfield against the biggest club in this city, it's just amazing. So it's been a delight to be here all week. And I've got to tell you, as an Adelaide Oval devotee, I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. If you're in South Australia, you're either feverishly <laughs> barracking for the Crows or feverishly barracking against them. Absolutely. Every Port Adelaide fan wants Geelong in a big way and every Adelaide fan wants the Crows. So tomorrow morning in Adelaide is going to be rather weird. It is such an enormous prize for the winner tonight. Win, play in the last game of the season or lose and watch on. Prelim final, it's not far away. Tex and Joel captain in their sides.
so a colossal season charges towards its climax and with that climax we have four clubs representing four cities and three states and we start here at the Adelaide Oval on a warm balmy night with the Crows up against the Cats. It's as big as it ever gets here because the winner tonight goes to the biggest game of them all. One individual's not bigger than two collective clubs, but for one player tonight, he's in a unique position. A champion of both teams in the prime of his life and playing legendary football. Yep, he holds a special place in this match this evening. It was always going to come to this. From the moment Patrick Dangerfield left the Crows, from the moment he came home, this night, this date with destiny, was inevitable. Everything that's happened since. All the heroic performances. Oh my goodness! Dangerfield! All the individual accolades. The Dangerfield. Three votes. The suspension. Oh, that was nasty. The injuries. Dangerfield's gone down. The resurrection. The headlines. The magic. Dangerfield, what can he do it again? He's a beauty. Brilliance. He's got it. He's kicked four goals in the opening half. It's the stuff of legends, isn't it? Every single moment. Perhaps he should have stuck around with us and he could be a Brownlow medalist and a premiership player. Has led him here. Adelaide Oval for a preliminary final. For a chance to play on the biggest stage of all. Standing in his way is the football club he left behind. And the thousands who once wore his number proudly on their backs. Standing in their way is one more match-winning performance from their one-time favourite son. Dangerfield sweeps and goes! So the moment has finally arrived. There's no turning back now. You win, you're in. You lose, you're done. It's D-Day. He says it's the biggest match of his football career. I'm with Wayne Carey and Cameron Link. Can he make the difference tonight? He'll make a huge difference, no doubt. It is monstrous last week. Unbelievable game against the Swans. But he's going to need help tonight because he's playing against a good quality football team, a really even football team, the minor premiers. So it's not just going to be the Dangerfield show tonight, though he will have a big part to play. He does thrive on this situation, doesn't he? He embraces it. He loves it. He's a big game player. Just get the feeling there might be a real special performance by Paddy tonight. And this team will be prepared for it because they know him oh so well, don't they? I mean, it's just been the most fabulous world. Can you believe how balmy and how great it feels out here? Oh, it's superb. Right here, down at ground level, there is a buzz about, but it is a beautiful night. I want to have a run around, Bruce. It's such a perfect night for footy. It is warm, as you said, but these two teams are going to love it when they hit this deck. And a moment ago, BT, yeah, Brian was roaming on the footbridge. Uh, thank you, Bruce. As you can see down here, we're just on the footbridge that accesses, uh, of course, the ground here, the train station, the city in behind me. About 75% of the crowd actually come across this footbridge to get to the ground. As you can see, there are thousands and thousands of people streaming in. For those that don't know, it's been an incredibly warm day in Adelaide today. Absolutely brilliant conditions. We're expecting a full house tonight, Bruce, 52 and a half, 53,000, somewhere about that. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Might grab a couple of Adelaide supporters, might grab this gentleman here. What do you, what do you, what's going to happen tonight, sir? Uh, I think it's going to be a very tight game, BT. Adelaide win? Uh, by a goal. And uh, enter their first grand final since 1998. We might grab this lady here. What are you hoping for? Is Eddie your favourite player, ma'am? Oh, he is, absolutely. What you, champion. How, how many will he kick tonight? Oh, four, I reckon. The Tex and a couple. But Eddie will be the main star, I reckon. No doubt in my mind. Thank you. As you can see, they are very, very excited. And as we turn the camera around, you can see actually where they're all heading. Of course, the stadium here, which is going to house all those people. It is a great vibe out here. They are absolutely streaming in, Bruce, and we can't wait. And they treated him like a rock star out there. They absolutely loved him. So how did the Cats get to the grand final? 
Well, they've got to be strong. They've got to be strong in the contest, don't they, Duck? We saw against Richmond, minus 19 in contested possession, but they certainly bounced back last week against the Swans in that area. Yeah, absolutely, you know, it's all about contested footy. Really poor against the Tigers and then absolutely smashed a team that it's good in that area. If they can bring that same intensity, that goes a long way to them winning the game tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Blitzarves goes to a Tom Lynch to just shut down that outside run, that real link-up play. Maybe Scott Selwood goes to a Rory Sloan. So they have a couple of jobs, but then they'll back their system in from there. It is extraordinary that only Andrew Mackey has played in a final away from Victoria in this group, isn't it? Well, it was 2005, that fateful game against the Swans when Nick Davis kicked that winning goal. Last words there from the captain, from the leaders. They know the start is so important. Silence the crowd. Might be scrappy early. I'm expecting them to throw numbers. Make it scrappy. Make it a fight early on and just settle into the game. I guess uh, Cockatoo, the surprise there coming into that team. Hasn't played a lot of footy, Bruce, so that's an interesting one. I, I dare say he's been brought into the team to put real forward pressure on. So if he kicks a goal or two, that's a bonus. But I think that's what he's been brought in for. And of course, on the flip side, if he doesn't get through the match, then there'll be so many questions. It's a big risk, isn't it? It is a big risk because he just hasn't played a lot of footy and he's had hamstring injuries. Richmond v Geelong from a couple of weeks ago with the, the roar of the boo as they came out. Absolutely. And there will be players that embrace that and love that. We know that Paddy Dangerfield will love it. Some of the other players, not probably used to a boo such as that, but uh, exciting time. A lot of these players, so much nervous energy going through their bodies at the moment. Taylor Ford will back. I think he'll be back. I think obviously Adelaide's real strength is their forward line. I think he might get the job early on Tex Walker. Do you think they want a low scoring or a high scoring match? I think they probably want a low scoring match to be honest. Lingy, you're with Chris Scott. I am with Chris Scott. You copped the booze as you came out there. I'm sure you expected that. Just one of the changes for tonight. Nakaya Cockatoo comes in. Hasn't played a lot of footy this year, but his best is very good. Bit of a risk though. Well, we don't think so. Uh, if, if he had a game to play um, last week, he probably would have played it. We just decided to go with um, the guys that had, had done it um, for the majority of the season. But he had that extra week training. He's probably been training at flat out capacity for the last three weeks. So he's well and truly ready to go. Bit of a performance risk mainly, but he's such a dynamic pressure player that I don't think it's a great risk. Are you going to go with the run with roll again? It worked so effectively last week. Blitzarves on Kennedy. Does Blitzarves get a job again tonight? Yeah, we'll mix that up a little bit. Like he'll he'll spend some time on Sloan. There's no doubt about that. And um, we've got Scott Selwood as well. And Matt Crouch has been such a dominant stoppage player for them that they're probably the two we need to look at the most. And you kindly told us last week. Where does Paddy start? No, we're starting forward. Uh, but um, you know, I don't mind um, telling everyone because obviously he's going to play midfield and forward. So when he does those things, it's probably not as relevant as how well he does them. All the best tonight. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thanks. So there you have it. He's going forward again to start the match. And isn't that fantastic? I think he might have been a little bit kind because Lingy's his uh, premiership captain, <laughs> so gave us that great information. Well, it is great information. Now we look at this team on top of the table for so long, but for three players in particular, Sloan, Tex and Tali, they haven't played much footy lately. No, they haven't, and that's a little bit of a concern. I mean, we don't know how they're going to be, whether they're going to be sharp. Are they a little bit sloppy? Because that is quite damning, isn't it? All of them one game in over 30 days. Not a lot of footy, Bruce. No, and that's one of the big question marks about tonight. No doubt about that. So the man who didn't really want to be captain when Phil Walsh said, you're the man, he likes it now. A big, big night for him and his team. They can hear this already. I mean, they're about to come up the race. And it's getting close to deafening out here already. It's going to be huge when this team takes the field. Tex Walker set the standard last time these two teams played. Aggressive, hard captaincy. Oh, this will be fun to hear this, Bruce. So the Crows are out these great chopper shots, thanks to Virgin Australia. They will be a big 
part of tonight's coverage. What a night for a chopper to be up in the air tonight on the perfect evening. So, Liggy, you pick out one player for the Cats. Who is it? Well, I just mentioned Tex Walker there for the Crows. I'm going to go the other kick forward on the other end of the ground. Tom Hawkins for me. I think Tom Hawkins right now, you think, OK, Tom's had a really good career and at times has stood up in big games, go all the way back to the 2011 Grand Final. But is he a great player? I don't know, a couple of question marks there. If he's huge tonight and again next week, Tom Hawkins becomes a great of the Geelong Football Club. And for you, Cam? Yeah, I'm glad you said Tom Hawkins become a great player because I reckon Tex Walker, if he can have a really big game tonight, send his team into a grand final, I agree. He goes from a good, very good player to an absolute star, maybe even champion status. That's how big these preliminary finals are. Leaky, what's all this about? Ah, uh, this is the Cats Convoy, the GMHBA Cats Convoy, headed up at 6am. All the fans piled on, bus loads. They're driving over here, they're watching the game, and then they're jumping straight back on the buses and going home. So there will be a Geelong contingency here in the crowd, but I think a little bit outnumbered, Bruce. They're going to have to yell very hard, we know that. They'll come here full of food, but they all need all the support they can get. So, for Crows fans, there is a big treat coming up right after this. Come Resilience. The act of rebounding. Resilience is defined as the ability to recover from setbacks, adapt to change and keep going in the face of adversity. The Adelaide Football Club is resilient. It's had to be. Rated by rivals, they've seen star after star after star walk out their door. Punished heavily for mistakes made, the loss of first and second round draft picks. This club hasn't had a top 10 pick in the national draft for 12 years. Rebuild is simply not an option here. They've prospered by recruiting players desperate for a second chance. Eddie, the unbelievable. In 2014, much loved assistant coach Dean Bailey lost his battle with cancer. And then in 2015, this. Our game is in mourning today. It's, it's devastating. An unimaginable tragedy. Footy's saddest day. Resilience gives people the strength to cope with stress and hardship. It's the mental strength people call on in times of need to carry them through. Tonight, this football club is playing for a spot in the grand final. They will be challenged. They will have moments of difficulty. They will be led by the man Phil Walsh instilled as their captain. Tex somehow, captain, big moment. They will be inspired by a man who has known recent personal tragedy of his own. Life is full of challenges. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. That's what resilience is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Football League and Premier Partner Toyota welcome you to the first preliminary final here tonight at the Adelaide Oval. Would you now please join with the coaches, players and umpires as we stand for the Australian National Anthem.
the hark up, a show of strength, not to be intimidated. And the Adelaide Crows very happy to continue with the stance, it looks like, for the remainder of this final series. Let's get down to Mark Soderstrom. Well, VT, you're spot on there. And uh, Sir Graham Henry, World Cup winning coach for the All Blacks, did visit the club and have a bit of a pep talk before that GWS game a couple of weeks ago. And you could see there a significant part of that stance there was they waited till the very end to see whether Geelong would blink and move first lot with GWS, and again it happened. So Adelaide mentally preparing in that particular way. Today we have had a top of 30 degrees around about 3 p.m. That is the hottest day here in Adelaide for five months. Right now, 23, so it's going to be tough. Magnificent view right there, as we see. In fact, it's dropped down to 21 already now. The first quarters, well, it's been the Achilles heel for both these clubs. Adelaide's won just the 10 this year. Geelong have won 11. If we go back to round 11, it was the Cats at Simmons Stadiums. They led by nine points at quarter of time went on to win but Adelaide here got the fast start in round 18 five goals to one they jumped the Cats by 22 points so went on to win by 21 and they broke that five game hoodoo that the Cats had over them so the start super super important tonight got Molina mate Molina okay Joel your, your call my friend heads and tails yep when you're ready heads is the call to tail Good luck, boys. They're even happy about that, the Crows fans. Ten of the last 11 minor premiers have made the grand final. Frio, the only team to have missed after winning the minor premiership. What a great night it's going to be. Packed house, great vibe in the place. Lingy and the Duck as we welcome you to the commentary box. Oh, massive vibe. It was so good down at ground level when the Crows ran out. Huge roar. Chris Scott has kindly told us that Paddy Dangerfield will start forward. Duck will be looking at who they send to him, thinking straight away maybe Jake Kelly, but it could be Jake Lever as well who gets the job on him. But as you've said right from the start, it's going to be one in the middle, the contested ball, huge for these two teams. It's a brave move, isn't it, to start him forward again, because clearly if you can win some centre clearances and hit the scoreboard, we just heard what Soda said, the team that gets off to a fast start of these two teams generally wins the game. So taking Paddy out of the middle again, I think it's a very brave move. So Taylor looks like he is back to start. Can Joel Selwood be the Joel Selwood we know? Can he get over the ground like he needs to? Well, they're going after Paddy Dangerfield here early on. The Crows, that's not surprising at all. Trying to make his way down forward. But Joel Selwood has had two quiet finals. I don't remember ever saying that about the Cats skipper. So expect him to bounce back. But this Crows midfield have just built such a wonderful season. The Crouch brothers, Douglas, Rory Sloan. This is going to be a beauty. And Hardigan's gone to Dangerfield. Umpires today, Brett Rosebury, Matt Stevick and Justin Smith. Matt Stevick has the honour of the first bounce. Jacobs in amongst it there, Smith there as well. What a game he played last week. Zach Smith elevated it and probably the best game he's had of his career. Motlop, a big contributor as well. They need him to play well tonight. There's Tui. He's played every game this year for the Cats. Selwood bowled over by Knight. The pick-up by Cameron was a beauty. And already up forward for the Crows. The matchups. Josh Jenkins has got Harry Taylor. Tex Walker looks like he's got Tom Lonigan. And again, like the Cats did last week, Lockie Henderson freed up as that spare. Took 13 grabs last week. We'll keep an eye on whether or not the Crows try and engage him. And Laird started uh, as the free man, but Parfit's gone for him now at the other end. Sloan dug it out, Atkins belted it forward. Walker's hands good, Lynch's kick quick. Gets to a running Jenkins, there is Henderson. Betts can't quite close. Blitzarves, Taylor. Douglas did really well, Betts dangerous here. All very dangerous. Cameron first goal. First goal of the prelim. So Harry Taylor back and Betts' ability to even perceive pressure. Yeah, applied a lot of pressure, didn't he? Already you can see the Crows, real focus already to just get to the Cats one after another. And Walker's hands were good. Very good, very good. And Atkins was smart. Good signs. Oh, great smother there. Build off the back of pressure this goal. You see there, Eddie Betts, so clever. And already they look on tonight, Adelaide. 
Tidied up very nicely by Charlie Cameron. As the crowd go berserk in the background. Poor bounce. Let's have a look at the setup at uh, the Geelong end of the ground. What are you seeing, boys? We're seeing them grouped together just inside 50. Tali has got Hawkins as we expected. They've gone fairly tall though. Stanley's there. Dangerfield, of course, forward. Good marking options. Sloan, Crouch, McKay and Seedsman all combining for that extraction. Now Knight to finish it off with a drilling ball. Deep inside 50, two on one for the Cats. Well done by Henderson and Taylor. Now he's going to have to knock it out, Harry. Lonning it on all fours. In they go again. Taken off the ball there might have been Betts. Umpire will ball it up within 20. So already you'd have to be wondering, what do you do with Dangerfield? Last week, fast start, they got the ball down to him, got early goals. Already the Crows winning the ball out of the centre. Yeah, that big body around the clearances will be handy bits. Oh, yeah. How's this? Can you believe this start? Flag's gone up already. I totally the flag's gone up already. I totally agree, Bruce. How long do you hold your nerve? Paddy Dangerfield already BT has come up to centre half forward. So already he's not starting as that deepest forward like we saw last week. So how long does he hold his nerve before he brings him into the middle of the ground? They've got to be shaken a bit. Eddie Betts has been quiet against the Cats in recent history, but brilliant goal by him. I'm with you, Duck. I'll give it two more minutes. Two well, more minutes, get Dangerfield around the ball. The moment that goal was kicked at the other end of the ground, they're into Dangerfield, saying to him, mate, it's not coming down here. You can play here as long as you like. So back in the middle, cracking start by Adelaide. Here's the first clearance to Scott Selwood for the Cats. Inside 50, shallow entry lead. Got it on to Atkins. Pressure handball. Hardigan overran the footy. Allowed Menzel to get a piece of it. In they go. Hard ball in underneath that by Laird. Riley Knight with a tackle. Selwood's there. This is Scott. Crouch. Collar Jasney. Tom Hawkins eventually got a piece of it. He tried to walk it out of there. Parfit a little one. And eventually Adelaide with an easy ball to Hardigan. From Seedsman who got it from Talia. To the underneath good mark. Against some pressure from Cameron. It was a poor kick from Hardigan. Kicked it to uh, to his advantage. To he, such a good kick to Duncan. 35 disposals and two goals. The only cat that's ever done that in the final. Last week. Kicks to about 35 metres. He's nearly, he's got it. <laughs> I said nearly, he's got it. Oh, it's just within the two minutes, Duck. And that, I suppose, is the thing that it always threatens is if you can get it to him. He's probably going to mark it or he's going to create something. So just the ability to hold that nerve and not send him straight back into the midfield after the second goal. His direct opponent turns the footy over to two and he comes back, he gets the one-on-one -on -one with Lever. It's not Luke Shuey a couple of weeks ago, but this is massive. Absolutely vital that he holds the line and doesn't come back. He's missed. He allowed for something that wasn't there. And that's a good side of him. Very penine conditions here tonight, that is for sure. Laird, high footy, couldn't mark it. Jenkins, Sloan had a go of it. Selwood got him high. Free kick, Sloan. Little handball out wide to Seedsman, who was going to go back in, in board, forced to go very wide, and Henderson's able to cut it off. Now, can they slingshot it? Adelaide quickly into defensive attitude. Goes short to Taylor, he's good mark. Well, the word pre matchling you were getting was that they got to try and make it congested early Geelong. They haven't been able to do it, have they? No, they haven't. They wanted to throw numbers around it, not let the Crows get off to the exact start that they have to this point in the game, pick those couple of early goals. So they're just going to try and bottle it up for maybe five or six minutes, get the game back on the terms of an arm wrestle and just settle the crowd down. But right now, the Crows look so sharp. Smith and Jacobs had a big match last week. Smith, Jacobs, a big, big season. Scott Seward, high tackle, free kick. Yeah, Matt Crouch got him a little high. Scott Seward. Another deep ball inside 50. This time Dangerfield's held. Trying to get hands on it. Almost had a second go at it. Now Adelaide trying to duck in and under. Caught with the footy on that occasion was Brown. And he's been pinged, and this will be a free to Cocker 2. Yeah, clear out. 
Oh, this will be big for Nakai Cockatoo. One game, Mingy, in the last 14 weeks, this guy. And only lasted just over 60 minutes in that game, BT. Yeah. Hamstring problem. And here is Cockatoo. They'll be hoping for some of this out of him tonight. A shot from the same spot as Paddy. So he knows he's got to kick it inside the right goal post. And that's better. So Geelong get there first. Cockatoo gets the first on the board. Took them seven minutes and Adelaide with the first two. And now Geelong getting a piece of the, the action down their end. Yeah, that's what he's been brought into the team for. It's that real pressure inside the forward half of the ground. And as I said before the game, if he gets a goal or two, that'll be a bonus. What a beautiful sight here. Only player in his first final tonight, Cockatoo. And suddenly that Geelong coaching box are feeling pretty good about themselves. Paddy took a mark, Cockatoo kicks a goal. It was the big call at selection last night. So two scoring shots apiece. Adelaide by five points. Duncan, Mackey, held up. Otten got him down. Ball. Thank you. Andrew, thank you. Up. One of three Stand South back. Australians in the team tonight for the Cats. Colour Jasny put Duncan under pressure. He's good enough to blitz off. So Geelong have done well here. They've steadied. Mackie normally reliable with ball in hand. Hawkins, terrific. It was a beautiful kick. Well weighted. And then Hawkins, not a great kick to set up for. Menzel made a very good effort, though. McKay spins and gets away. And that's a good delivery to Douglas, who's up and about. So Douglas at halfback, trying to ease it inside of Jacobs. Got a bit of flow here. They're away. Playing well. Crouch got it on to Cameron. Looking for the little one over the top. Decides to go with a longer kick. Otten's in good position here. Jenkins Stewart, what a fist that was. A timely one indeed. Taylor to Lonigan. And Lonigan's kick under pressure. We'll give Adelaide another look. Goal saving spoiled by Tom Stewart, but it's coming back. They were scrambling. The Crows had them over the back. Really good ball movement by the Crows forward then. And a beautiful kick by Cameron, wasn't it? So here's Atkins, sets it to 13 metres. Jacob, Jeff, Sauce has got it. That's big. If you've got your ruckman able to take contested marks inside 50 and around the ground, and that'll be a massive confidence booster for him because Zach Smith last week was magnificent. So really putting the pressure on him. Four goals, five from set shots this year, but... You would back him from here. He's got it. Adelaide get their third. If your Ruckman can push forward and make the other Ruckman work defensively and find a goal early on, just straight away means that Zach Smith doesn't have the game on his own terms. And coming off the back of last week, as you said, Doug, his confidence would be sky high, Smith, but that just puts a little dint in it. Sam Jacobs there, beautiful get through the footy. His first finals goal. And a good start here for Adelaide. Three goals to one, plus the danger field miss. Ten and a half minutes in. That one will be recalled, I think. No, the umpire was thinking about recalling it. Decided to let it go as right Smith here. had an ordinary one out. there. Quickly gets rid of it here now. Smith in the parts of Blitzarfs. Thrown off the ball there, Seedsman. At the back door, and a goal up. Crouch, soccer, game 20, under real pressure was Mackey in the middle of the ground. Riley Knight goes in. He went low, the umpire said. Drop down. Drop he dropped down. down. There you go. Fair call. Just noticing Mark Blitzarves out there now going to Matty Crouch on the right of your screen. He was started on Rory Sloan, so he might just be rolling between the two Monty best Adelaide midfielders, Monty whoever's in there at any given time. That's testament to just how good his aerobic capacity is. The fact that he's not going to take a rest when Sloan heads to the bench. That must be a massive running ask for Mark Blitzarves. So Knight to Mackey. Wheeling around as he does, and uh, it's a good kick. 
Stewart, who was so inspiring last week, had the hammy problem. Now, has that stayed in? It has, Stanley. Came in last week for Lonigan. Of course, with Blitzards, we know that he wasn't all that far away from representing Australia as a 1,500 metre runner. Talented family, Laird cuts it off. Little gift to Jacobs. Good start for Big Sauce, and then Jacobs short, OK for Douglas. He kicked a career-high four goals against the Cats in a Friday night game here in round 18. Goes back inside to Matt Crouch. Crouch forced to just go short, and Laird getting plenty of the foot. He's just got to watch his turnover by foot here. And that's why he's better off taking the short kick wide or one like that that he knows he can make. Good ball to Lynch. Lynch can hammer it. A little over the head of Betts. Mackey under pressure, got the free. Well done by Andrew Mackey. He's a great player. He's looking to play in his fifth grand final, Bruce. He and uh, Joel Sewood will be doing that if they can get there. Here's Duncan. Sixteen of the Cats have been in a prelim before. Only half a dozen of the Crows from that Hawthorne match. Oh! So, B. Crouch to Hardigan, who started on Dangerfield. He's got Talia wider, goes with a poor kick. Cut off by Blitzars, and then Blitzars short, short. That's a poor kick, too, to Hawkins. So, a couple of turnovers there. That one really costly because Geelong were home yeah. almost. And Talia was staying back to guard the long ball in and left Hawkins, and he really should have made that kick. Seedsman. Former Pike, short ball, G. Knight may have just taken his ball off, Tui. He's really having a crack, and there is Tui. Used hands and feet, now Selwood able to duck under the tackle. Here's Dangerfield, explodes out of the middle with a low ball to Hawkins. Hands on it, couldn't reel it in. Kelly under enormous cockatoo pressure. Dangerfield looking for the free, nothing on. Lightning hands from Adelaide, what about that? Greenwood, little ball over the top here to Walker. Walker can go short to Cameron or drive it long. It's a high ball. It wasn't deliberate to Lynch, but he's taken the mark nevertheless. He was looking for the longer one deep. It came off the side of the boot. Yeah, it did a little, didn't it? It did a little, but it, the most important thing is to space. And that's what defenders don't want, to space. So it at least allows the four to run onto it. Well, Lynch found himself by himself. He's looking for Jenkins, I think, who was in a good position. So Lynch now from 48 metres out. That's on line. Gee, they look good in front of goal, Adelaide. Four first quarter goals. On the turnover there from half back, they look so good cutting through the middle. And Geelong went without opportunity no, twice in a row. Exactly right. Both teams making some real basic errors there. Knight dropping an easy ball. But you're right, BT, we so often talk about goal kicking and being efficient. They are dead eyes at the minute in front of goal. So that fabulous shot coming into the Adelaide Oval on this... Army, beautiful night. Adelaide off to a fast, fast start here with four goals in the opening term, leading by three. Dangerfield got it to Selwood. Selwood got it to Dangerfield. Dangerfield had it smothered by Crouch. Collar Jasny gets in. Crouch was terrific. That was the other Crouch to Atkins and gets to half forward. Walker got a little push. Otten attacked the ball well. Gave it to Lynch. Lynch clever. Gave. Tex half a chance. Seedsman, can he get it to Walker? He does. He's almost within range. He hooks it, hooks it, hooks it to the pocket. Two he can't quite. And Geelong are really on the back foot. Linger, you talked about contested possession, how important it is. Pretty tight at the moment. 18-16 Adelaide's way. The big discrepancy, though, keeping efficiency. Geelong just at 52%. The Crows at a really respectable 76 to start. Oh. Yeah, we're going to have to lift that. The Cats, that is for sure, Mark. Smith, held off with one hand. Jenkins looking for the high tackle. Being good, the umpires, not paying any dubious ones in terms of the high tackle and the bend of the knees and all of that sort of thing here so far. So, do it to him. She unlucky there, probably, yeah. wasn't he, when you yep. look at it. Should have, been, should have been too high. Yep. Instead, it was Painter's holding the footy. 
got away with one there, Joel Selwood, but just on Soda's point about the contested possession, pretty even. Geelong are just getting... Oh, I'll let you take over here, Bruce. Sure. Core had to get rid of it very, very quickly. Jenkins with the push-off and Selwood and Hughes, who's been a beauty in the final so far. In fact, he's a much improved player. The pressure has been oh. enormous, the Crows. You saw it, another example right there. They're inviting Geelong to handball, aren't they? And then just closing it down straight away. But Adelaide at the moment, just a better balance around the contest. They're getting them on the outside once the ball's won. To his long ball length, did, did pretty well. But uh, now Scott Selwood has to run the gauntlet. Adelaide making Geelong uncomfortable down back, aren't they? Putting them in pressure situations. Cats just need to steady here. Contain the damage for the minute. Knight's little toe poke forward. Dangerfield certainly getting involved. Lynch tucked it back, got it out. Dangerfield and Knight, and now... Duncan over the top, or rather Minangola over the top. And what the Crows are doing well, Bruce, why they're panicking Geelong a little bit down back is they're covering all the outlets. So the Geelong players have got a handball, they can't kick, which just invites more pressure onto the ball carrier. Silver gets it to space. He did indeed, but have a look who's chasing it. It's Brown, that'll arrive first. He's got a little help there and his mate Napkins. They go backwards and Kelly's kick's got to be good. Sometimes if you can't make it, don't go for it. Laird just committed himself. Wasn't that wonderful? And now Atkins. That's those 50-50 balls. Oh, another poor turn. Yeah, intercepted by Scott Selwood. So there's a lot of action in this part of the ground. And then the handball cut off by McKay. Jenkins, a long way back to Seedsman, who's been in most things going forward so far. Paul Seedsman thought about McKay, went inside to Hardigan. So their back line pressing up a long way. Harding goes with a low ball at this time. Stewart in front, off hands, Lynch, little bender, and a roller to finish. Lynch has got a couple in a row. They are excited here at the Adelaide Oval, and why not? A 24-point lead. She would have had the Cats have had two turnover opportunities, big opportunities. And they've coughed it straight back. That's exactly what's happened. They've got the turnover, and then they've given it straight back to the Crows. Poor kick. Basic fundamental errors. Splits half burns a kick, and yep. Selwood ham Scotty Selwood handles into the opposition. Yep. <laughs> Great defensive work by the Crows. Poor skill execution by the Cats, and the Crows are capitalising. Okay. This margin is getting worrisome for go. Cats supporters. 24 points. Crows have been scintillating. Two big turnovers. Blitzarf burns the kick. Scott Selwood handballs into a crow, and it's cost them dearly. Sloan to Walker. We know how effective he is with the kick. Well, there you go. That did him in. Sloan gets it wide. Atkins the left footer, so he'll wait and get the angles right, but he's prepared to push it wider still. Crouch. Greg Crouch. So this has been a sensational start from the home team. He sets it up. Walker out of position. Jacobs went in. Selwood holds his nerve this time. To he normally a very good kick. He waits and waits and really doesn't do a lot with it. Gee, the defence and the pressure that they're exerting Adelaide is unbelievable in this part of the ground. Colin Jasny found a little opportunity, but Geelong players are having to come right up to try and help out. They've found some space now with Cockatoo. Motlop wasn't watching. It was behind Dangerfield. He tidies up Motlop, and the kick has got to be in front of Menzel. Good hands. Really good hands in front of Jake Kelly there. And Menzel. To just slow things down a little. Can go in board to College Asney, I think it is. Finds him. A lead off it down there by Lang and ignored. So a very static forward line. They go deep into the pocket here. Cockatoo's there, and so was Stanley. But it was never a threat. Just one little worry here for Scott Selwood for the Cats after that tackle. Just grabs at the left hammy there. He's staying on the ground and hasn't come off. So hopefully all good, but. A little worrying sign for him. We'll keep an eye on it. Sodas will be all over it. And he missed three games this year, Lingy. Uh, sort of the second half of the year with a hamstring problem. So Important there. Matt Crouch, Hardigan, well done, Lang. Bouncing ball. Lever takes them on. He tip. He's in trouble. Scott Selwood's gone, boys. I think he's going to come off. 
physio's talking to him at the moment and leading him off the ground, so good pick up, Lindy. What a huge blow yeah. that would be, Bruce. Absolutely. Changes a lot. And Lamb hits the post. They need everything they can get here, the Cats. It's early, there's a long way to go, but the home team are off to a flyer. Hardigan. Right in that interchange area where Scott Selwood has just gone down into the rooms. Stewart to Menengola. Selwood, that was Joel around the corner. He walked right past you, so he's going to come to you in a moment. Here's Jacob. Little handball out the back. Hardigan took it on. The kick's got to be good. Jacob's there to cut it off, goes sideways. And they're not up trying to overkick the footy as Douglas Little went over the top of the lynch. So does. What do you think about Scott Selwood? Well, of course, he missed those games. Uh, what was it, back round 15, 16, 17? Look, it looks like he was moving OK at the moment, but you're right, there was a fair bit of grief with him oh. just there before he came goes up. Goes deep inside 50, looking for Cameron. Taylor went to ground. Gee, did he knock it out delivery? I think so. Fair call, good call. He knew he was under pressure, Taylor. He was on his, on his uh, all fours. Everyone else around him was on their feet. It was almost a professional free kick, but unfortunately, Eddie Betts has got the <laughs> footy, so not too professional. Uh, you want someone else to have it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's going to perhaps run around and kick it around. He is. So around the corner, here's Betts, got the bend on. <laughs> what about that? It just peels around the goalpost. Eddie's got his second. for the Crows with under five minutes remaining in the quarter and they are as pumped as I've seen them for some time, Duck. Yeah, yeah if there's one play you don't want to give the ball to in that position, it's Teddy Betts. Unbelievably consistent from those parts of the ground. What a goal by Eddie Betts. That is last year's preliminary final. This year's preliminary final sits at 37 to 8, 29 points. A lot of Geelong players talking all year about redeeming for that from that game against the Swans where they were blown out of the water in the first quarter. Well, few have delivered on that promise. The Adelaide Crows have been absolutely superb. They need a goal, Lingy, before quarter time and they can't concede another. Greenwood taken down. Ball squirts out, Duncan, Tui, Lang, he just arches his back, then kicks it hard and high, but he doesn't get it far. Hawkins completely outnumbered, Lever cuts across. Adelaide team so well in that back half, don't they? They are a cohesive unit, even without Smith. Laird has been so good in this match early. Gee, they are deliberately going short in this area of the ground, Bruce, aren't they? Yep. Which, whichever direction, it's always short. Kelly. 32 marks to 16 at the moment. Just They're changing totally angles control. really well, Adelaide, don't they? Yeah, they do. Well, that's silly. So that continues the pressure. So Otten, Lever. Short again. Another... Uncontested, Laird setting so much up in this opening turn. Jenkins gets a good run at it here. Off hands, Douglas got it to the goal square. Seedsman, unlikely. 30 out directly in front. Chris Scott bewildered. As Seedsman lines up for goal number seven for Adelaide. 12 touches and a goal last week for Seedsman. He was pretty impressive. And at this rate, he'll definitely hold his spot, although that kick was not fantastic. Came into the team very late in the year. So Menangola. Good last week, not so good in the opening week. 
So you can see the left hamstring tape there of Scotty Sullivan. That's the Geelong doctor just talking to Scott. Obviously finding out exactly what he's feeling there, but in fact it's strapped up and... I reckon he told him to pull it there and you're not going back. Is that you reckon? Well, Lingy, they have strapped him up. So he came running out of the change room. He looked like he was moving pretty freely, so I think they might uh, just sit with him for a moment before they make that call. Jacobs, Otten, Taylor, clever enough handball, and Mackey walks it over the line. But throughout the finals, we've had access to the Telstra tracker, and Rory Laird, the All-Australian, leading the way, 3.6 Ks early on. Brandon Parfitt's been his opponent for most of this first quarter. That's why he's clocking up so many Ks. Laird was their number one runner, 15.6 Ks in that first final against the Giants. That's why he gets as much of the footy as he does. Just a massive work rate down back for the Crows. Tracking 50 here for the Crows. Greenwood, not lop in there. Who's going to fly the flag for the Cats? Where's it going to come from? How are they going to activate it? Chris Scott will get a, an opportunity in around about two minutes to chat with them and redesign things. But Adelaide looking brilliant. Tui goes to ground. Hanging off the back of him is Douglas. Ball spills out. Siegeman had it for a moment. Opportunity here. Collagesny couldn't handle it. Motlop's handball is smothered as well. Adelaide will not let it out of their half of the ground. They keep going. Eventually, Tui to Mackey. An opportunity for them to build. To either kick the Stanley, had to go. Some Geelong player had to go. In the end, no one did. And Jake Lever able to put it down the throat of Greenwood. Gee, they've kicked the ball well in the opening turn. Greenwood. McKay got on the end of it from Brown, put him under pressure. So he's been able to elude it, and then with that long, beautiful leg of his, gives Cameron a run at it. Stewart, Cameron, it's out of bounds. Oh. It's a big call, but it's out. Just for a moment, I think, Bruce. Geez, at times when the Cats have had control of the footy, they've just yeah. butchered it. Just there. And it was a goal. If he had yeah. it kept it in... Little knock down here, Betts, a little show of the footy, got a bit of a spiral on it, got a bit more ground, was Jenkins being held? No. Stewart paid the mark, crowd not happy. So a minute 14, do they go for gold or do they protect from more scoring? Duncan, one of their best players this year, Mitch Duncan. He'll need to wind up here. For the Cats to get back in it, it's a 30-point lead. Fly on, fly on. Slides it down the line. Dangerfield comes at the ball. Off hands, Menengola couldn't trap it. And eventually over the line, so we'll throw it in. Right in front of the interchange area. And Duck, you've highlighted it so far in this first quarter. Turnovers for the Cats have been the killer. Adelaide have defended really well. They've scored from turnovers, five goals, two. So 32 points. They average 70 points per game, which is number one in the competition. They're on track to absolutely blow that out of the water. Problem for the Cats is it, it hasn't been under extreme pressure. They've just been basic fundamental errors from the Cats. We saw their kicking percentage yeah. a moment ago, their efficiency. Oh. So less than a minute to go on the opening term. Brad Crouch gets it forward. Tui and Lynch, Lynch and Betts have been so important early with four goals between them. Buse, does he keep the ball in? No, he doesn't. So coming back, can Adelaide conjure another score here? Played the more Atkins and he sets it to about 45 metres. Lynch, the one crow, Smith gets across. And uh, Geelong just dying for that siren to go. Have a look at the metres gained for the Cats, just over 800, whereas for Adelaide, over 1,500. I mean, they are really using the ball well going forward, Cats, Cats struggling. Tom Lynch on the top of that again. Yep. He's so important for the Crows. All Adelaide players. So Smith lays it down to Matt Crouch and he bubbles the ball forward. Jenkins belts it back. Duncan, Duncan, had a fair bit. He's gone, he's gone. Tried to break the tackle. 
Doesn't get hand to it or foot to it. No arguing with that. That's holding the footy. Well, what an opening half hour. This would be icing on what is already the most perfect cake if you're a crow. Is it coming back? It didn't look sweet. It's coming back. It's a behind. It's a behind. So it's a 31-point margin at quarter time. Not much has gone wrong for Adelaide. And for Geelong with an injury and a deficit, a big deficit. It's 39 to 8 in the preliminary final. Adelaide over the Cats. see the killers of the MCG on grand final day it has been the perfect storm for Adelaide the flying start and they lead 39 to 8 at quarter time well there's Chris Scott there at a quarter time pretty quickly went over to his forward groups as the boys stayed within their line groups and spent a lot of time with the forwards before we brought them all together Scott Selwood well he's still got the hamstring strapped he's not on ice yet so he spent most of the break there moving around so they expect that he still will figure in the game at this point now for the Crows, Eddie Betts pretty quiet last time they played in round 18. Jet Buse did a great job, kept him to eight possessions, no goals. He's already kicked two. Tommy Lynch, Jimmy Bartell said he's the most important player for the Crows earlier in the year. And you can see he started well too. 31 points to the break. That is the second biggest lead the Crows have ever had. Only 32 points in 99 bigger. Thanks, Sodas. Another bounce. Perhaps may have been recalled, but the umpire said both Ruckman are in it, so fair enough. Dangerfield hovering over him. Brad Crouch. The ball dribbles out the back to Blitzarves. Mackey to Selwood. Had to get rid of it quickly. Blitzarves forced to go on his left, so he went with a hand instead. Now, the Tui kick is good. Can they make something of this? Jed Buse kicking wide here, looking for Menzel. And Hardigan there with him. Mackey. Has to send it backwards, little clever knock on there, but Adelaide now off half back. Lever sets it up with the ball to crouch through the middle of the ground. Here they go once again. The Lynch pin in Lynch, the rocket ball, the bullet to Jenkins on the lead. Well, again, Tom Lynch was involved there. Just a smart footballer through the middle of the ground. Brad Crouch was able to find him. He was just queuing up there for 15 seconds or so. Tom Lynch and a beautiful kick in to the leading Josh Jenkins. At the moment, Tom Lynch, the leading metres game player on the field, 255 metres. That is big to this stage of the game. I reckon the Cats have got to put some time into him. 22-14 this year with set shots. Jenkins, here he is from 48. No problems at all. Adelaide, 37 points. Getting it right in front of goal tonight, that is for sure Adelaide. Yeah, their use tonight has been absolutely superb. And Lee, we, we spoke before the game that maybe Blixards, rather than the obvious, Lynch might have been a guy that, giving at Lynch's running capacity, Blixards maybe needs to go to him now, or maybe too late, to be honest. Could have been the perfect matchup. Yep. Well, this crowd are, are going off and you can't blame them. I mean, they're, they're already thinking about what go. might be, but they just got to get the ball, Geelong, don't they? And then they've got to use it. Get it, keep it and use it. That's what they did last week against Sydney. They can't do that. Well, not, that was interesting. He went the wrong way. Crouch. And now Dangerfield charges to 50. And what happens here? It's a behind. Is he passing or going for goal? No, he just gave a little uh, I'm sorry to his teammates there. Crouch just saying, I kicked that one the yeah. wrong way, but didn't hurt them too much. Oh. Geelong need all the help they can get right now. So Laird here. Crouch. Cameron demanding the footy and got it. Missed the run on McKay, so looking to go wide. He could have gone either way. There were players both sides ready to accept. Jacobs never tries to overkick the footy. Jacobs to Seedsman. He thought about running away from Smith, then Seedsman.
Jenkins is long but stagnant, puts it right on his head. Back of the pack here is Walker and the big fish from Lonigan. Throw it in. Once again, precision kicking from full back. Laird, then Crouch up the corridor. And, Just and always it. off the line, isn't it? Yep. Making the Geelong defensive structure shift until eventually a hole opens up. Great seats there to watch the action. All Adelaide at the moment. Geelong must do something in the first half of this quarter. Knockdown comes to Dangerfield. You can see he's trying to work his team back into it. Mackey was tackled and dispossessed. Little ball in here. Opportunity for Adelaide. Clever little kick comes out of the pack, but it'll be out of bounds deep in the pocket. And it was Crouch. And both of them are getting plenty of football at the moment. Paula Jasny spent most of that first quarter on Tom Lynch. Now it looks like Andrew Mackey's got that run with Roll at the moment. All those metres gained by Lynch and goals kicked and goal assists. So Smith beaten by Jacobs. Walker little give good to Matt Crouch. Matt Crouch gets it back and Seedsman's got another one. They've got eight. We're seeing, but we are a little stunned here. It does take two to tango, and right now there's only one team that's uh, come to the dance, to be honest. I mean, Ge Adelaide are good, Geelong are awful. Geelong now just on the back foot due to that Adelaide pressure, the early onslaught. Just all waiting around watching them. The Crows hungry at the footy. Clean by hand and a clean finish. Duck, you highlighted their efficiency with ball in hand is supreme at the moment. Boy, is this a determined, committed outfit here, the Adelaide Crows. Jacob spinning out of the pack. Bangs it on the boot and got it as deep as he could. Charlie Cameron and Tui there. Little bit of support here from Henderson under Cameron pressure. And all they can do is get it to the perimeter boundary at the moment to try and relieve pressure. Look at that kicking efficiency yeah. there. Under 50% for the Cats and 75 for the Crows. That's the game. Absolutely. That is where it has been. Turnover City for the Cats by foot. Not lot there, Sloan, Blitzarves, Lynch, Dangerfield trying to muscle it out. Knocked out of Blitzarves by the tackling Crouch. He's thrown to the ground and there's his brother as well. Bundled it out, Atkins goes to fend off. Good tackle, Dangerfield. A little fumble there from Colin Jasny. Now he's got Cameron to deal with. And the Crouch brothers, they're both in there. Walker, Lonigan, they just want it more. What a brilliant save from Walker. Top of the square, Geelong under and Seedsman off the ground, got it. So much pressure. It just kept coming and coming and coming. Seedsman kicks his second and they go for soon. Very good kick from Walker from that position to get that ball back to the top of the square from there under pressure. It was great. The bets came from nowhere to sort of make a half so well, that that's put Henderson under the pump, yeah. didn't he? Just change it and pulled the ball ground. Two on one. It's, it's just phenomenal what they're doing here. That's just tiny there from Eddie Betts. Looks nothing, but he just got a hand in and pressured Lockie Henderson. So it came to ground and allowed Seedsman to get his second goal. You don't get a step stat for that, Eddie Betts, but you get a lot of pats on the back from your teammates. Dangerfield might lop off a step. Nick Rawls sitting here stunned at the moment. Selwood runs into Sloan. They just can't get a forward and centre. And to be truthful, ball. maybe now. Oh, I've done it. No, no, no. I thought he, I thought he missed it. Missed it. Oh, there. He dived on the ball. Play on. Play on. Oh. You're up. Play on. And Selwood says, hang on a second. I need to get back to... That is a rough call. Ridiculous to be truthful. So Cockatoo fends off, did well. Good kick inside 50. Mark taken by Dangerfield. Has to, has to. He knows what he has to do. You've got to say, Joel Selwood. You're trying to run back and. Yeah, the crowd there. Thought that was definitely holding the ball against Lonigan. 
missed the first shot tonight. He missed another one a moment ago. And he has got it. Yep. Well, what about the noise? Clint Dangerfield's kicking a goal. Well done, Paddy Dangerfield. Under unbelievable pressure. And finally, a goal comes. The last one was at the seven-minute mark of the first quarter, Bruce. So we're now at the eight-and-a-half-minute mark here. So the Cats get one. This was a great kick from Cockatoo. And Dangerfield did an equally as good job with the set shot. So just a little glimmer of hope here for the Cats. Beautiful bounce in there. Dangerfield again. Thought about getting it on the boot. Went the handball instead. Menengola couldn't control it. Off the back of the square. Buse spun in the tackle. Dangerfield trying to lift his team. Kolodzhazny goes out wide here. Kick's got to be good. Very close to the boundary line. Lever did well. Ground level needs some support here. McKay went without it. Greenwood went in. He was tackled. Kept the arms free. Motlop did well. Geelong, Stanley and Motlop combined. Little centering ball to Duncan. He can get it and go. Hammers it from 50. Geelong is kick two and two minutes two and two just what the doctor ordered and you can see Dangerfield just yep. willing his team can't you yep. important that Motlop got involved there we saw what he did last week Motlop important he got involved Duncan's been a star all year but you're right Dangerfield has willed himself to make a difference here, hasn't he? They've got to do it quickly before the dis you know the lack of belief yep. settles in, I reckon. Well, it's been 30 degrees, we said today, around about 3 o'clock. It was 23 when the game started, and it's actually raining now, remarkably. It's still pretty warm. It's around about 20 degrees. So the Cats with a couple of goals in a minute, and they get an eight-goal match back to a six. Selwood. So Dangerfield again, having a massive five-minute little burst. Cockatoo tries to turn. He flipped the ball out. Well done, Laird. He's been superb to Matt Crouch. Crouch's kick, that was good by Taylor. Building the ball away. Knight just missed the target. They haven't done that too often. Tui to Taylor to Mackey. A couple of old heads there. Mackey inside now. Tui normally good with ball in hand. He ran too far, really. Put the pressure there on Menangola. Turnover, perhaps. Greenwood can't get it out. Menangola takes him down. There'll be a stoppage. But Geelong have made a little inroad in the last two or three minutes. Good news for the Cats. Scott Selwood back on despite that little hamstring concern that's been strapped up. Well, I wonder whether it's the all or nothing sodas or whether they're prepared to risk and See what happens here, or whether they reckon he's OK to go. There he is, right in amongst it. Little handball out the back to Blitzarv. Mackie the run here. Parfit's got the ball in the middle of the ground. Goes long and direct here. Over the head of Cockatoo. Ground level, Talia there. Just swatch it towards the boundary line. Got it as far away as he could. Atkins arches the back. The kick's under pressure. Now Geelong forcing the turnover. Good mark by Stewart. He run for it too. This gives off the chance. Gave it to Cameron. He puts on the arc. The burners. Goes long to the square. Bet's getting back. Henderson may well be a goal. He's kicked the goal from about 70. Chris Scott in disbelief as Cameron gets his second goal. wasn't a mark because it was touched off the boot. The umpire called it early and then the Crows just went for it. Charlie Cameron breaking the game open and Eddie Betts with the awareness to just let that one go through. Didn't touch it. Selfless footy again. His last six games, Cameron had kicked a total of one goal, six. He's kicked two straight tonight. Duncan gets it back. Can he get the second goal in this turn? Going close. And touched again.
been going through. As I said earlier, 35 disposals, two goals in the final last week. He's the only cat that's ever achieved that. And he's making some inroads here tonight. Gee, Adelaide are used to seeing that number 23. Guernsey do big jobs in finals, aren't they? And they're seeing it again here tonight with Charlie Cameron. Talia goes down the line. A little bit of a conservative nature there. Tex almost gloved it. Motlock. Handball out the back. Lynch. Relieving pressure. Kelly Crouch. Here comes Scott Selwood. Turnover complete. Motlock goes for it. Might be an illegal tackle here. Let's have a listen. What's that? No, no, no prior opportunity and the tackle held for too long. I'll bet. Unlucky. Pressure was brilliant. So Crouch the recipient. He just sort of sets it up down that line. Not a target, Stewart, with some help from Stanley. Richard, one! Richard, one! Thank you! Kicks to about 50. Lever first hands there. Laird, Hawkins got a touch on it. Motlock getting a little busier. Flicks it out now. Tui, good long kick. We know. Can he get the right angle? He can't. Stanley off a step and he's hooked and missed. But Geelong at least getting some shots here. And Adelaide have done really well when Tui's got the ball. We know what a dangerous kick he is. It made him handball on a couple of occasions. So does rain getting heavier there now as we speak? Absolutely, BT. It was just a little bit of a drizzle before, but now it's coming down uh, quite hard, which will keep... Well, Adelaide would be pretty happy about that. Amazing, considering the unbelievable day we've had here. Not a cloud in the sky, hot. Summery-type day, and all of a sudden rain from nowhere. Well, this just makes it uh, real difficult now for the Cats. But what do they say, BT, that the... Whether the Adelaide gets here arrives about 24 hours later in Melbourne. Uh, we're expecting maybe a little bit of a damp one tomorrow at the MCG, perhaps. They're forecasting a warmish day there, and who knows what happens after that, Lingy, as we've seen here tonight. So this has been a little bit better from the Cats, but guess what? They trail by 40. So the scoreboard doesn't think so. It's been a four-goal to two-quarter here for Adelaide. After their blistering six-goal to one in the first quarter. Smith, Dangerfield, Douglas took him out, Sloan, a little fortunate with the kick but Lynch is in the right spot, Cameron lurking in the middle of the ground, Riley Knight here, right in front of the interchange area, I've admired their short kicking behind the play here, not trying to bite off too much, Knight goes longer, Walker there muscled Henderson with the fist. No impact Henderson so far tonight. He, like every other defender, on the back foot. Such a playmaker last week. So as BT said, despite Geelong's efforts, they've been outscored in this term. Adelaide led by 31 at the first change. The Selwoods together. Joel getting the kick after the handball from Scott. Well done by Kelly. Down to Menzel. Menzel's little gift to Selwood. To Menengola. And Menengola had to buy a bit of time and he... Kicks the ball forward, knowing they didn't have the numbers. Parfit put some pressure on Lever. Good stuff there from Hawkins. He got down uh, Brown. Stanley, can he get it back to Hawkins? He goes backwards again. Menengola's handball poor. Picked off by Atkins. In fact, not picked off, went straight to him, actually. And his kick is a beauty to Otten. And Cameron's on. Otten goes the other way to Lynch, who does this all the time, doesn't oh, he? It's got to go through the organiser, Bruce, and that was Lynch, but he's kicked not this time. Everything that seems to be funneled through Lynch, doesn't it? Yeah. He really organises them going forward once they've won the footy. Blitzarv, short ball to Tui. Mackey. Around the corner. Will he go one more year, Andrew Mackey? Henderson now, good-looking ball here. Opportunity. Got to mark those men and goal. A good handball to Parfit. Arches the back. Couldn't run away, though. High footy. Here comes Dangerfield. And he pushes Lever into the back of Laird. But Laird able to stand and deliver. No, BT, Andrew Mackey finishing up. This could be his last game, the way it's going at the moment. He'll be hoping for a miracle to get one more. Kelly squeezing. Collar Jasny. Can he bang it? He's never kicked a goal. Collar Jasny. 
He and Lonigan in their last season, aren't they? Yeah. Right. Ian Lonigan, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, he's playing well enough to go yep. on BT. He is. Well, they both are. Yeah, they've both certainly finished. Well, one might not be on a good note the way the scoreboard reads at the moment, but certainly with good form. Lever wide, Otten into this Otten side. Man, he's got a free here. Andy Otten, he and Sloan come in. Smith and McGovern out with the two injuries. And this is the man that's got his chance. Played forward a lot this year. Douglas, Laird and Sloan all combining here. Funny little kick by Sloan on the ground. Not so good. Mackie, Henderson combining. They both keep the arm free. Now uh, Mackie decides to just get as much on it as he can. High ball, Stanley off hand. Buse through a bit of traffic. Colin Jasney knocks the ball to the ground. Parfit's got to go. Tried to tap it to himself. Stanley again went and got it. Handball, Scott Selwood. He was taken high. And he's going to settle for the set shot here. This will test the hammy. It's a fair way out, you're right, Duck. And the Crows have got to be onto that to make sure no Geelong players line up. But why aren't Geelong onto it? Well, it's a good call. There's the high contact just over the shoulder, but you're right, nobody going over there to help him and try and get a kick. He's not a long kick as it is. And he's got the hamstring. Now Brother Joel realises. He arches the back from 48. He's kicked the goal. Thank goodness. No, he hasn't. Minor score. But Joel knew exactly what was going on. They were sitting on the bench earlier in that first quarter. Would have had a conversation. So yeah. he understood the circumstances beautifully. Yeah. Saved his brother. Brotherly love. Sloan gets it from Lever. Play on handball, Joel. Lynch in the back half. Good kick again. Otten doing enough. Douglas running hard. He arches his back. He's a long, long kick. We know that. Floating it, Jenkins, Taylor, and a behind. Just didn't get the kick right, Douglas, that time. It was a floater. Walker saying, Richie, I was there. So 14 scoring shots to 10, but it's not as even as that. Not long. Short and OK. I'm there, Paul. So Menangola in that back half still. Menangola just slides it down the line here. Off hands, Mark taken by Blitzarves immediately to the runner. Motlock, Motlock looking for someone to go with him. Lever doesn't know which way to go. Motlock with a little low bullet. Gee, that's a good kick. And Parfit finishes. But now the real finish. We haven't seen that too often, have we? That precision kicking going inside 50. Look at how full that hill is, just yep. where Puffett is lining up. He's about, we'll kick it from about 47. But there's the task ahead. Now it needs to swing back, and it has. Has it got the legs? Danger field on the line. So he'll get this shot directly in front as a result of marking it in the square. And he wastes no time, goes back, kicks his second goal. And it's as close as they've been for a while, the Cats. 33. Dangerfield with his second of the quarter. And they have kicked three of the last four goals here, Geelong. Lifted, haven't they? No question. Mr. Couple. So the next sort of six and a half minutes, crucial here. That's a great pack mark, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And we've got Jacobs down there, Lever down there, Hardigan down there. Love this bit of high work rate from Motlop. He took the kick in from full back. He was able to run the whole length of the ground. Got involved here. Linked up. Handball received. That's how you break the lines. Being prepared to work hard and run like that. And then a terrific pack mark by Paddy Dangerfield with the goal. Blitzard building it forward. Duncan, Joel Selwood. Heard the call wide. Dangerfield onto it again. Bangs it to about 25 metres. Hawkins outnumbered. Ball comes to ground. Selwood high tackle surely. I just highlighted Tom, work rate, but Joel Selwood got the centre clearance then and worked down hard. And there's the high contact against Rory Sloan. Dangerfield's been massive in this Yeah, massive. He's been just as impressive this week as he was last week. 
so Selwood, who just missed one a moment ago, he too has lifted in this quarter. And he's nursed at home, and Geelong making some inroads here. Yep, back to 27, Bruce. Yep, consecutive goals twice in this quarter. And it's the big gun, Selwood and Dangerfield doing their best duck, isn't it? It is. Been absolutely superb. Dangerfield's been huge, and that's why you wonder whether they outsmarted themselves at the start of the game by playing him forward again. You have to wonder, given Dangerfield's dominance in this quarter, did they outsmart themselves in the first quarter by starting him forward? Well, he's had ten possessions, five contested, three tackles, two goals, one in this quarter, Duck. Backing up exactly what you're talking about. Seven to one centre clearances this quarter to the Cats. Thirteen goals to six. Thirteen to six inside fifties this quarter to the Cats. Here he is again. Spot on duck as Dangerfield now to rip another one out of the middle. He goes wide to the one-on-one. -on -one. Blitzarves the one-on-one. -on -one. It was a good one-on-one -on -one with Charlie Cameron. He really should have taken the ball at the highest point and not allowed Cameron an opportunity. And Geelong have got the free. It'll go to Henderson, I think. And this will really test him. He'll go very, very close. Tui's hanging around at the back of Henderson because he is a designated hitter. And here he is. He lines up. Tui from 55. It's bending back. It's going to have the wheels. It'll be a metre short. Good effort, though. From Tui. So the Cats, as you say, Bruce, 26 points adrift. And this is as close as they've been since late in the first quarter. Kick 4-6 in this term. The Cats have been able to really hit the board in the last five or ten minutes late. So Adelaide being challenged hard late in the first half. Lair kicking defensively down the line. Otten the target. Kolodjazny gets across. Betts tried to keep it alive. Ball in. We've seen so much more of that, haven't we, Duck? Yeah. The long down the line from Adelaide. We're in the first quarter. It was precision ball use, taking it off the line, just working their way through the catch. Geelong have fixed it up defensively. They're starting to get the game back on their terms a little bit. Sloan going head-to-head -head with Dangerfield here. Smith winning the tap. Scott Selwood had it ripped off him from Seedsman. Seedsman gets it across to Crouch. Crouch a Walker in a good spot. Henderson did well, cut across and gets the stoppage. It's a little more poise about Geelong for the minute, isn't there? Adelaide still with a big lead, but it is not insurmountable. It was, I reckon, five or ten minutes ago. Yeah, absolutely. If they could find a goal in Tom Hawkins, Lingy, find something and get him motivated, well, not motivated, but involved in the game. Brad Crouch to Douglas. Good gather, knew he was hot, had to get rid of a danger field on his tail. Yeah, you're right, Daniel Talia doing a wonderful job on Tom Hawkins, only the one mark, hasn't hit the scoreboard yet. I've just noticed Geelong too, in the last eight or ten minutes have broken the tag of Blitzarves, they've moved him out to the wing. Yeah, I'm watching. I'm and they've watching just it. gone with their A-grade midfielders and said, you guys do the job. So a much more attacking setup. quick snap at goal offline. And that was Douglas. So four minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first half. and Another goal here, and I reckon they've really done a great job to get themselves back in the game, Bruce. No doubt, too. He goes long. He wants Blitzarves. Hardigan belts it back. Greenwood underneath it. Blitzarves building it back forward. Taylor and Hardigan. And Lonigan in a stoppage. Well, ten minutes ago, they would have taken the score to Geelong with yep. interest, wouldn't they? This gives them something to work with in the second half. If it remains like this, another goal is an absolute bonus. Jacobs laid it brilliantly to Crouch, who runs his full measure and kicks a behind. You called it, Bruce. Superb by Sam Jacobs and Brad Crouch. The communication to set it up first, but Jacobs' execution of the tap. That's why the big fellas, the Ruckman, could still have a big influence on the game of AFL footy. That was beautiful service. Colin Chasney looking for Dangerfield. Sloan desperate to get it across the line. 
Boundary umpire said play on to Motlock from G. It's a late call. Yeah. Now, the boundary umpire closest to the action said it wasn't out. The one furthest away had a very late whistle. And that's this man that's got the footy. It's OK, though. The other guy may have been unsighted. He'll try and throw it in the 18 metres. Perfect boundary throw in. Knocked down by Smith. Muscled it out to Duncan. Showing the footy, wants to get maximum penetration, left foot kick, Menzel in front, brings it to ground, Laird had to spin out of the tackle, what a great handball it was, here to Kelly, Kelly with a high ball to centre half forward, Greenwood deliberately trying to knock it down, Kolodzhazny with the tackle there, went one, two, couldn't get hold of the ball, Kolodzhazny has another go, little knock out here, comes to Mackey, did well Seedsman, kept it in front, have a look at the Geelong jumper surrounding him, Tex just bangs it off the deck, and it'll lock it up in the forward pocket for the Adelaide Crows. So danger has gone forward to have a breather. And it was from that congested play, Dangerfield actually spat forward, trying to catch them unawares, but Tom Lynch did the same thing for the Crows. Both free inside their respective forward lines. So Smith at the back of Jacobs, Sloan reading it brilliantly. He's in the goal-kicking position, and he misses. So a couple of misses late in the turn for Adelaide. Plenty of time for both teams. But the game has a, a much closer feel about it. Geelong working their way back to his long ball. Stanley Goodman. That really was a great grab, the boy from Berry. He goes out wide. Lonnie Gadorji Minz has crunched him. Friendly fire, ridiculous there. And now bets in. A very good position for Eddie as he goes with the left foot to Jenkins. And Henderson, good work by Tui there. Henderson stops and props. Stewart, he put him under a little bit of pressure. Back to Tui. And then Tui, oh, that is a brilliant kick. Blistering kick it was. A magnificent ball. Stanley over the top, sets Motlock free. He can go wide to Mensel, ignores that. This kick must hit Hawkins, it does. Hawkins has got to wind up. He sees Cockatoo wide. It's a two-on-one here if they want to go. Cockatoo lets it rip. Good-looking ball. Dangerfield knocked it out in front of Selwood. Dangerfield looks like he's out cold. Talia cleaned up in the end by Seedsman. Kelly takes it away. Dangerfield still lying flat on his back. A big bump on him. Crowd start to stir. Crouch with a little left footer. Finds Douglas. He's picked himself up and he was really rattled, wasn't he, the champ? Now Lynch in that familiar position where he normally feeds. He goes wide to Betts and the Betts goes back inside. He's got the leg, Seisman. Can he kick a third goal? No, he does just that. And gives Otten the gimme. Seedsman, groin injury the first 12 weeks, didn't play at all. They basically got in very, very late. Otten gets the goal, and Adelaide get the steadier. Paul Seedsman's been a great replacement for Brody Smith. Have a look at the bump, just two fierce competitors going at the footy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Total commitment from both players. And the Crow is able to rebound it. Oh, that is just good hard attack on the footy. Commitment from both players. And what a moment, Lee. What happened after that with Adelaide's yeah, goal? Absolutely. They were both vulnerable in that position because they were front on. That wasn't a, a deliberate turn on the side bump, was it? No. Attacking the footy front on, accidental shoulder. Yeah. Here we go. 35 points. Stevic. Out of the middle came Matt Crouch. High footy should mark it, Henderson does. So, with a half a minute remaining here, they can't afford to concede the Cats. So, conservative ball wide, Cameron. Trying to light them up, sets them free. Crouch to Sloan. Do they go for the all or nothing? The sideways kick to Lever. Gee, it was a hard kick marked by Menzel. There's time here, 19 seconds. Menzel's able to run. Good purchase, 55 metres out. Long ball, Kelly. Had to give that off then, Daniel Menzel. Two players, about 20, 25 metres out from goal. Had an easy option, needed to take it. 
had to pass it. So a moment lost, a big moment lost for the Cats. And Sloan and Dangerfield so often talked about in the same sentence. Well, going for the same footy, it was a huge moment. And Adelaide lead at half-time, 11 goals to five after Geelong had made a run at them in that second quarter. The preliminary final, a heaving, packed house here at the Adelaide Oval. Welcome back to the Adelaide Oval. There was a fair bit of heat in the game early and then the Crows got the first two of the night. Cockatoo for the Cats responded, but it was six goals to one in the opening term margin at quarter time, 31 points. Seven goals in a row after the Cockatoo goal to the Crows. And things look very bleak if you're a Cats fan. 48 points the margin, it was narrowed to 26, but at half time, it is the Crows by 35. They got the last of the half. Big thanks to Virgin Australia. They've been giving us unbelievable images of this great city throughout the night. It's a heaving Adelaide Oval. This was as the players were disappearing to the change rooms. Tex, very verbal, a little bit of scuffle. Not a lot in it, but the Crows flexing their muscle mentally, physically. Yeah, just a little bit of feeling in that one. You, you just get the feeling that Geelong still think they're in this game. And they did have good parts. Letting that last goal through was uh, was costly. I sense you like that from Tex. Oh, absolutely. And I, I reckon he's brought that to his game in the second part of the year. That wasn't a part of his game previously. He's brought that in, and I think it makes him a more intimidating player. What the Crows have brought to the finals yeah. is a different stance in the national anthem. The first week, there was some discussion as to whether it was planned or not. The Crows played it down. Second final, same thing. Absolutely. BT was all over this. He's been over this since that first final, as you said. And look, they, they stand the same distance apart, arms out, make themselves look bigger. And the play didn't even blink. There's a real seriousness uh, on their face. They, uh, it's a real focus for them, isn't it? And you can't argue it works right now no. because the way they started this game was sensational and the pressure. One thing's to do it before the game, then the next is to do it once the ball is bounced. To back it up, it was unbelievable. And it just made Geelong panic with the footy. Started with the smother, led to the first goal of the game for Charlie Cameron. And they did not relent in that first quarter. They were so impressive. Tex Walker led the way. Eddie Betts was doing it in the forward line. Just pressure right across the ground. And Geelong turned it over. Their scores from turnover and Crows in the first quarter was simply sensational. 32 points in that first quarter when they averaged 70 per game for the season. Uh, just brilliant by the Crows. The branch was creaking for the catch. You thought it was about to snap. And then Paddy Dangerfield and Joel got involved. Four of five goals at one stage of Paddy Dangerfield. He's our Macca's champion player of the first half. Yeah, look, uh, first quarter, I reckon they, they out-tricked themselves here, Lee. Starting him forward, you obviously have to win the ball at the coalface. And they didn't do that at the start. So they put Danger into the middle in that second term. And he was absolutely brilliant. Set everything up, had stacks of the footy, hit the scoreboard himself. He's, and that's why I don't think at, in a big final, and I know it worked last week, but it just goes to show you that it doesn't work every week. The ball does have to get down to you when you're playing deep forward. And even after the first minute or so, they moved him closer to the action, moved him to centre half forward, then invariably had to move him onto the ball. But his second quarter was absolutely brilliant. So the margin's 35. What does Chris Scott do with him to start the third? Oh, look, I'm I, clearly in the middle. Yep. You don't start him forward uh, in this second half. Got to start him in the middle. That's where he's been doing his damage. So that's what I'd be doing. And, Duck, do you know the other player who I liked in that second quarter who seemed to lift Geelong? And he's our Telstra tracker man for half time. Is Steve Motlop. Oh, yeah. Had a good game last week. And we're just going to track the work rate and why he's starting to get some reward. This is from full back. So he's kicked into himself and obviously just gone the shorter option, but prepared to walk, uh, to work and run the lines and try and break the game open. You can see here, he's worked over 50 metres here to get this handball received. Break into space again, bounce. Then the Adelaide defenders are starting to worry. So he's up well over 100 metres as that ball goes inside the forward 50 for Geelong. 
that's the type of run they need to do in this second half if they're going to be any chance of turning this game around. You mentioned Stevie Motlop. So Dangerfield got a couple. Selwood got one. Duncan got the other. Motlop needs to add to it. Maybe they're a chance. Yeah, well, they've lifted, haven't they? There's no doubt about that. that as I said, that last goal just before half-time really hurt them. Yep. If they can get the first couple in this third quarter, just, just bring that margin closer at three-quarter time, they'll think they're a chance. Yep. Rain started to fall again. Now, the Cats are on the ropes. They haven't been knocked out yet. They're not on the canvas. The rain's not going to help that. No, it doesn't. No, and, and they've got to even up around the footy, and which they did a bit in that second quarter. Clearance has got back level a little bit. Now they've just got to take every chance they possibly can. They can't afford those simple turnovers early on in this third quarter if they're going to be any chance at all, which I think it's hard from here. But, and, and that's the problem. You get so far behind, if they kick two or three and then the Crows get one back, they just can't allow the Crows to score but score themselves. That's the problem with... Uh, yeah. Righto, time for a break. Half time. It is the Crows by 35 in the prelim final. Prelim final tomorrow night at the MCG. Richmond hosting the Giants. And then on Monday night, it is the Brownlow medal. Counting down to the grand final next Saturday. Who will it be? Well, Adelaide's certainly in the prime position as we go down to Mark Soderstrom. Soders. Well, Bruce, uh, if we have a look at the contested football, that is normally a really good indicator between these two sides. The game at Simmons Stadium earlier in the year, it was the Cats plus 34. They won that comfortably. And then it was the Crows plus nine when they played here in round 18. Right now, it got out to plus eight. It was as big as plus 17 a little earlier in that second term before Geelong come back. That man there, Scotty Thompson, 308 games. Obviously the bulk of those with the Crows after he started his AFL journey with the Demons. He has, well, a couple of offers to look at in terms of where he's going to go next year with his coaching. There's some interest at Sanford level, also perhaps at AFL level too. In terms of injuries, well, for Geelong, we know Scott Selwood, just with that hamstring, had that strap. He came back on in that second term, so he looks like he's still going to persist with that and see how he goes for the rest of this game. For the Crows, speaking of hamstrings, we know Mitch McGovern's not in this side after he tweaked his hamstring in that scratch match last Saturday at Footy Park. The official line from the club is, well, they remain hopeful that he might be some chance to play in the grand final if Adelaide are good enough to get through in this second half, but he is very, very unlikely to front if Adelaide can get there. Adelaide has lost four preliminary finals with leading at half time. Now, Geelong need everything they can get right now. It hasn't been a kind fixture for them in the past, but they have set themselves up here. So everyone ready to go, and I think that might have been the one minute siren a moment ago, so we just take a deep breath and get ready. Geelong have gone A grade in the middle here for this centre bounce. They know how important this first five minutes is. Selwood, Dangerfield, Duncan trying to drive them forward, but the Crows have been more than a match in there. The Crouch boys, Rory Sloan. And again, the man down back has been superb for the Crows. Rory led 19 disposals in that first half. Had a big influence going at 95% disposal efficiency. He is just so important. He's only 23 years of age, Rory Laird. I couldn't believe that when I saw it. I, just the way he plays, you feel like he's 27, 28 and just an old experienced head, but still so young and such a wonderful footballer. All right, 35 points adrift the Cats. Or will it be Adelaide into the grand final? Only Richmond has waited longer than the Crows to play in a grand final. Smith to get it going here. Smith, clever knockdown on the path of Duncan. And a throw. Adelaide, throw. Brad Crouch. Yep. Must have copped a flick in the eye, I reckon. Goes sideways. Finds Laird, the man you spoke of. Little kick over the top, it's good to Sloan. Very deliberate when going forward from that position. Now Sloan into the pocket. Cameron, how did he mark it in amongst those three? Taylor, Henderson and Tui, and he was in the middle. Now, I was watching him before the game, BT, and from this position, he was running around on his left foot, although the way he's lining up looks like he might have a deliberate shot, but was kicking the ball around his body on his left before the game from this position. Well, let's have a look at what he does here now. Goes with the set drop putt, looking to bend it back from the left to right and won't get it there. Kick the first goal of the game, Charlie Cameron. He's got a couple to his name. 
And he looks like he's really into this game in a big way. So he has the first shot of the second half after the opening goal of the night. Stewart to himself. Cockatoo, good mark. He kicked a goal too. He was the lone goal scorer in that opening term for Geelong. Good kick to Menzel. Can he hit the scoreboard in the second half? He'll need to. He won't be the only one. He kicks to about 80 metres. Hawkins in a contest. Laird taken down by Lang. Stopped raining, I think, so had a fair bit of rain at half time. Had a bit in the first half. Lang very short. Kolajasny. Kolajasny short. Not quite going to get to Hawkins. Hardigan stood there and Buse couldn't quite reel it in. the ball might be a touch slippery though we saw Duncan unable to control it in the middle the boundary umpire wiping it here so that long ball over the back could be important early in this half yeah there are a couple of players on the fat side of the ground I'm just not sure that he could have made the distance to get it there so Hawkins became the only real target tackle there on Selwood and both hands were held behind his back as his head was drilled into the ground I don't know whether we'll get another look at that but Interesting way to tackle Joel Selwood. Tex and Eddie. Right in between the interchange gates. Jacobs and Smith. Smith's going to have to climb back to where he was last week. If Geelong are going to get up here, Duncan. Beautiful little kick to Hawkins. And Hawkins in front of Talia. Talia won't be too disappointed with that. Locked up against the boundary line. He goes the barrel, and that's the one over the back. Almost got it there. Menzel was lurking. He was waiting. Took him on here. The Adelaide Crows. McKay didn't get the bounce of the ball. It was Brown that initially got it there. Now it spills in here. Opportunity for Cockatoo. Hardigan's got him in the tackle. Ball pinned, the umpire said. Look at that desperation by the Crows. Two players going for the smother. Two players following up, tackling. Sloan doing a lot of running with danger for at the moment as well, isn't it? Yeah, we love that matchup. And Lang hooking back, and that is a goal. Lang gets the opening goal of the second half. That's important. He played well last week. He was brought back in. He had the serious shin injury earlier in the year, and he got close to career high last week, and he forced them to play him again. And just something out of nothing there. That's what it might take early on in this third quarter to try and build their belief. Just a bit of a wild snap, but the goal's a goal. Yep. All right, well, they're back within 30 points here, the Cats. Lang has nailed the first goal of the second half, and it's excited the Cats around him. So can they build some momentum out of this? Crowd all of a sudden activated again. They can feel Geelong trying to surge forward, and here's the clearance. Beautiful palm to sell with the kick, not so good. McKay to cut it off. Lever with a bit of a no-look, a sliding handball. Kick by McKay's a ripper to Eddie Betts. And then Betts gets on his bike, and it's a fast bike, we know that, to Atkins. And then Atkins caresses the footy to Je no, to Cameron. Thought he was going to go to Jenkins, and Cameron again presenting in the forward 50. It was the perfect kick. It actually drew Cameron to the footy. Never kicked three in a final before, but he has now. He's got the hat-trick, one in each of the three quarters. Well, he's been the X-factor tonight, hasn't he? Absolutely, and that's as clean as it gets. That was just a beautiful kick off the boot, wasn't it? That's what he was doing on the other side on his left foot before the game. So if he gets a shot from that, that other side, he'll, he'll do that exact thing. That's just a brilliant kick. And with no disrespect, he was channeling Eddie Betts there. That could have been Eddie Betts, exactly what he did yep. there. We know how close they are. This is a clean finish, isn't it? That's as brilliant as you get. BT mentioned that that number 23 has been in some pretty big finals. A pretty good final save. The Norm Smith with Andrew McLeod. Eh? He's channeling that. Oh, boy. Have a look at him. He looks very, very happy with himself there, Charlie Cameron. And why not? Three goals in a final. College Asney 
Dangerfield ran back into the Sloan tackle then. Jacobs knocked out in the tackle. Little ball along the ground. The Cats might lock. That was knocked out in the tackle to College Asney. Thus no free. Long ball inside 50. Over the head of Hawkins. At the back, Hardigan did well. Kelly, short little ball. Here's Laird. Laird can go even shorter and wider and he does and finds Seedsman at half back here for the Crows. The ability for the Adelaide defenders to find someone with their kicking has been phenomenal tonight. Good strong mark by Taylor. He's done a good job on Josh Jenkins tonight. Jenkins only with three touches, kicked a goal though. Gee, Stewart put under the pump from Cameron. He did a very good job. Motlock, we've talked about his work rate in the first half. It was impressive. Running. Now, can he deliver? He lost a poor kick. That is such a disappointing result. Laird to Sloan to Jacobs. Back to Laird. Well into the 20s now and going at about 97%. And he gives it to the bloke that always presents. It must go through Lynch every time they go forward. What a cracking kick it was to Tex. Tex turns around, wastes no time. Gives Jenkins a one-on-one -on -one with a smaller three. Out muscle, out body, out position. Good kick to advantage. Smart kick by Tex. He knew that Jenkins had the mismatch. Jenkins has had Harry Taylor all over him all night. Walker identified the fact Jenkins had Tui. And just got it to him. No mucking around, just got it to him. And once Fred again, the Crows, the angle of the kicks before they go inside 50, the Cats' defence can't set up because they don't know where they're going to go. Have a look at the advice, advice he's getting from that Geelong man there. Boy, did he give him a real baking. As now, Jenkins comes in, good-looking hoist to the footy. Didn't bend back enough. They love to have their say, Bruce. Might have offered him a ham sandwich, you just yeah. never know, BT. Yeah. Kicked a goal in the second term, Jenkins. Of course, been part of the build-up, hasn't he, with Dangerfield and the little by-plays through the week. And, of course, with the Harry Taylor early, that kick by Stewart, cut off by Sloan. Of course, didn't play with his appendix operation in the first of the finals. Only match he's missed, had career high in round 23, kicks to full forward. Stewart and Betts both got high. Matt Crouch, yep, what a year. What a season he's having. phenomenal he's had the lowest number this year of 27 disposals on the occasions that he hasn't had 30 he's had 27 28 29 29 29 he's had a phenomenal year brilliant <laughs> bit of a smoky for the uh Brownlow. Brownlow. well he'll get over 20 votes mightn't be enough but no <laughs> just watch the smarts of rory sloan here Knew they had to attack down the middle, read it off the boot straight away, and scores from turnovers tonight have been the big win for the Crows. Matty Crouch with a great finish. 63 points they've scored. They average, I'll repeat that, they average 70 this season. Number one in the competition. They are blowing that out of the water. Well, a nine-goal differential just in that part of the game. That is unbelievable. Taylor. Every Adelaide player doing their little bit. As they inch closer to a third grand final, Tui. Good penetrating run and a very, very good kick. Smith, Talia. Kelly now got it all to do. He didn't want to flick it out. He knew he didn't have the numbers and he disguised it brilliantly well. Well done, Talia. Well done, Jake Kelly there. That looked a certain goal for yeah. the Cats. Just desperation, get the hand in, get back, get a stoppage they can set up again. So Smith and uh, Jacobs, Hawkins, Scott Selwood, strong tackle by Seedsman, has been a star. Sloan, terrific in the crunches, but that ball not out. Try to get out. Menengola yeah. pleading, but not receiving. Stoppage, forward 50 cats. Jacobs clever, Atkins clever, Betts cut off by Motlop, not far though, night underneath it all. Brother Brad Crouch, wow. little give was good, Mackie, and, and now Bue gets a fair bit on it. Oh gee, it was a pretty good kick. It's a behind. How fast did Geelong have to play here, Duck? I mean, well, they, they have to play the perfect game because they're so far behind, Bruce. So. It's going to be de very difficult. High risk. Yeah, high risk. Got to take the game on. Go for things that they wouldn't normally go for. Seven goals down. 
Hardigan playing the percentages. Otten couldn't hold on through Greenwood as well. Taylor needs to send it out. There were three Geelong players there waiting, couldn't quite get his hands yeah, on it. Huge grab did it, thank you. You almost have to risk losing by a massive margin to get time. yourself back thank into you. the game, Lingy. It's got to be really high risk, yep. high reward. Jacobs to Sloan, Smith, and the two Selwoods combined. Here comes Hawkins again. Hasn't looked like it in the air. Hasn't had quality opportunities, I must admit. Led to Jacobs, ran around it. Joel Selwood went and got it. Men and Goller tried to thread the needle. Low ball, Menzel. This time he got rid of it. Danger field. Dribbler, it's wide. But they will lock it in their 50. They need a burst from him now, don't they? They need a big burst from him. Sloan started the second half really well. He's been playing on Paddy for a fair bit. He had an enormous second quarter, but Sloan had an enormous moment late in the second quarter that could be defining. Jacobs laid it down. Lang looking for another goal from a similar setup. Gets it to Dangerfield. Has he got the leg? He's gone. Great tackle. Hardigan gets him down. He started the match on him in the goal square, and he has a big win. Oh, Intercept there, Menzel did well, he read it beautifully. Just inside 50. And this will be a set shot for Daniel Menzel. But he'll have to give it all he's got. He'll be right on his range, Dan Menzel. Hardigan, great tackle to nail Paddy Dangerfield. So hard to tackle, but unfortunately just looked up and telegraphed it too much. Menzel he cut it off well. He kicked a goal from this very point, I reckon, last week against the Swans. So here is Menzel. He'll have to muster up every piece he's got in his kicking ability. Right on 50. Good looking kick just offline. So a couple of Geelong opportunities created, but not a lot of effect on the scoreboard. So McKay, he's going to go long. Big fly at the back by Henderson, no mark. Menzel, 22 goals, four from set shots for four tonight. Seedsman with a telling kick, but a good mark by Buse. You would have almost backed Cameron with what he's done so far tonight, that ball. Well, this is the risk that Duck and Lingy were talking about that they have to take. They may get to a point where they can win the ball. Selwood, magnificent to Motlop, and then Motlop off the step to full forward. And Hawkins can't quite, it's a mark pay. Chopping over the shoulder, I think. And the high risk footy and the Selwood win. <laughs> that Joel Selwood win was unbelievable. Yeah. In amongst three Adelaide players, able to get it to Hawkins, and there that arm just coming over the top, free kick there. But you're right, Doug, you've got to play like it, and it means you can get scored against the other way, and the margin ends up blowing out, but it doesn't matter. No percentage in finals. He's had very few chances tonight, has to nail it. It's a good kick. Held the line, Geelong edge a little closer. Well, I reckon that passage of play summed up what they've got to do. It was a high-risk kick coming out of the back. They relied on a champion contested football to win something against the odds and it created something. Yeah, it's all about those 50-50 contests. Tui beats Cameron in a 50-50 contest and then Selwood probably turns a 30-70 into a win. He's having a big night, Joel, by the way. He's back in form tonight, isn't he? Yep. <laughs> Our Telstra tracker tonight just highlighting the importance of Eddie Betts, Charlie Cameron for the Crows, but also Steve Motlop for Geelong sprint yeah. efforts. That's 24 k's an hour for more than a second. That's high intensity running. Betts is already at his season average of 20. Be big for him. You see him pointing off the back was a free Geelong player as Cameron bursts out, and there is the free. That's exactly what Eddie Betts was pointing at and trying to get his teammates to cover from the bench. Gee, that's a funny old kick. Tui trying to make something happen that wasn't there. He had Lang in the long, and now Otten. Short ball by Otten finds Crouch. Thought about going, did Matt Crouch. A bit too far out to score. He sees lurking out wide an opportunity here with Brown. 
Round about 55 metres from goal, as you can see. Little ball still too far out here for Riley Knight. So Knight, deep in that half-forward flank area. You get the feeling at a 35-point margin with Cameron yeah. that it's going to get away, and Cameron with a sensational grab looking at goal number four. He is putting on a show. This is his breakout game. The star is born. Oh, doing it on the ground, doing it with the pressure, and <laughs> now doing it like that in the air. <laughs> that is a brilliant grab, and Eddie loves it. <laughs> Eddie up and about, and he says, that's my man, Charlie. And Charlie's coming in for goal number four, and he's got it. Charlie, look at him, going to Eddie's pocket and said, I nearly own you now. And it was Charlie Cameron that actually got the centre clearance also off the back of the square. He's done it so often this year. He and Eddie Betts swap in that role, and so often it works. Talk about work rate. He does that, then pushes forward and takes an unbelievable mark. He just ran away from him in goal and then off yep. the back of the square. So, not only a great mark, it was he that won the centre clearance before that off the back of the square, and that's where he started again at this centre bounce. Well, as Lingy said, an absolute breakout game for him. I mean, he's he had is. a big semi-final last year in Sydney, but this is another level again. Menengola, oh, there he goes again, Cameron. Little toe poke forward, Mackie in heavy traffic. Brad Crouch torpedoes the ball forward. Waiting, waiting, Henderson. They've just got to keep the scoreboard ticking over Geelong at a fast rate. Dangerfield protected the football. He did pretty well, the little give in high pressure, a throw by the look of it, not paid, umpire, not in the right position, boundary throw in. Bruce, the crowd really getting involved now, they can uh, sense some pretty good things happening with the lead out to 41 points. Charlie Cameron too, he's four goals tonight, he's had an outstanding season, it was a huge pre-season for him, he just shredded a heap of time off his 2k time trial at the start of the year. See the Adelaide bench man there, just saying to his boys, settle down, pull back, take your full rest, don't get too anxious to get back on, Duncan caught in the tackle. Jenkins now, looking to give it off, decides to go backwards to Lever. Lever very, very reliable, nice little kick to Crouch. So Matty Crouch slides this one back inside. Finds Brad. The brothers combine. Play on. Just going down the boundary line carefully. Here's Tex. Couldn't quite get over top of this. Have a look at this from Charlie Cameron. Just a little bit of, in the words of Lou Richards, <laughs> he man. <laughs> I'm the man and I'm Charlie. For the Lou Richards recipient, the award winner. <laughs> BT, so Cameron starring tonight. Smith and Jenkins, Knight, Menengola. Motlop was going to toe poke, but he saw Menengola's hands. Ball squeezing, squeezing. Selwood's been big, can't get through. Walker's little give. Lynch, good kick. It's front of the goal square. Greenwood stood up, no free kick. Douglas clever across the face. And Henderson escorts it through and then quickly on and the Cats try to get it out. Gee, they're weathering it well though, the Crows. The Cats are going to throw everything out as you said, Doug. They're playing high risk, but the Crows just playing rock solid professional footy. Defending well still, winning the ball around the contest. See, they've been good tonight. Motlop. Duncan. He can get it over the top. He looks like Buse running forward, it is. He goes. Good work from the Cats. Smith. It's been an all-conquering Crows outfit here tonight. They lead it by 42. Smith puts it on the head of Stanley. All the big boys are there. And good mark taken by Menengola. 20 metres out. It's a three goal to two quarters so far in favour of the Crows. Once again, the run from Motlop off halfback just to play on, create. And then use the footy well. Men and goal are being told, 15 gone, plenty of time. Needs to kick this. It's only a 20 metre kick. Oh boy. 
Goodness gracious me. Did you see that duck? Yes. What did you make of it? That's what 50,000 supporters can sometimes do to you, BT. Both teams have had 10 set shots tonight. Adelaide a 7-3 and Geelong a 5-5. Just a couple of goals, but two goals to Geelong right now would make a big difference. So one big chance missed there. Sloan, Atkins. Atkins tonight. This kicking for Adelaide was such a feature early in the game. They set up Lever directing traffic to Douglas. Douglas doesn't panic. Prepared to go back to Atkins. Atkins runs his full measure. Then he goes down the line, Geelong with the numbers. Taylor, no freeze, a bit unlucky. Betts, beautiful kick inside to Jenkins, who yeah. doesn't like to give it off in a hurry, and he probably should have there. Oh, still should have. Gee. He just burnt them by turning his back on them. Well, when you do that, there's only one thing you've got to do. You've got to kick it. Uh, an old coach used to say, you live and die by the sword. If you don't give those up, BT, you better make sure you put it through the big sticks. It's going to take a good kick. He probably has the length. He is fully committed. And there you go. So, I'm not sure if anyone could teach him to handball in a reflex manner, but he has to. Well, even, even tonight, times when he's had the footy, he has it, Bruce. And every other one of his teammates is so unselfish, and at times, he can be selfish. Lang, great flick to Henderson. Hawkins was a little late in coming forward, so Harding is able to lead him to the footy. Well done by Stanley. Head over it and run it. Now he's got to get rid of it, and I'm not sure he did. Well, look at the Adelaide fans. And they knew exactly what was going on there, and they demanded he blow the whistle. They've had nearly 20 less tackles than Geelong Adelaide, but it just feels like Adelaide have tackled better. I know that doesn't make sense when you just talk about raw numbers, but their ability to stick tackles and tackle with real intent has been impressive tonight. And here's Adelaide where they crisscross the ground. Atkins, Nick kick down the line. Mark not taken, Jenkins recovers, Taylor hangs on, Jenkins taps forward, Walker runs the goal, and he did well, Tex, Jenkins dropped it down, swick handball by Crouch, Douglas clever, Knight, well done, they get it back to Jenkins, Jenkins, well, no, didn't find the target, and uh, Henderson able to cut it off, and then now Geelong have got to go, but you've got to get the ball first. Yes, and they have, Tui, forced to kick around the corner without authority, and have a look at this. All Adelaide back. Parfit in the middle of three. Kelly did well. Although Parfit was able to soccer it once and twice. Now he puts Brown under a little bit of pressure. Brown did really well. Protected the footy and deliberately. And I reckon he'll be pinned here. Dive Dong pulled it in. Didn't flick it out. Atkins. Brandon Yorks. Let's go. At the bottom of the pack. So Parfit a handball to Motlock. Motlop a difficult angle, goes for the all or nothing, and he's drilled it. He's got it. Motlop gets one back for the Cats. You look for players on a night like tonight when your back's against the wall. Who, who's going who's to do something? Who's going to stand up? Well, you can pick a few Geelong players that haven't been able to do that tonight, but not this bloke. This, no, bloke, it's been good. this bloke's reputation, funnily enough, when they're getting builded, has been enhanced. Yeah, no, he's, he's been superb tonight. He's gut running and the ability to just want to take the game on has been fantastic. So, it's under the chin of Mackie. <coughs> Very snugly under the chin. Uh, just trying to fend off there. All right, Tex Walker, the Adelaide skipper. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, Motlop's continued to try for the Cats. First so Sirwood digging in to Buz. Great smother for not the first time by Sloan. What a competitor he is. Jacobs, Knight, here he goes. He's kicked for Cameron and he caresses the centre half forward over the back. Sloan running so hard. Good tackle though. Threw it. On the ball, illegal spot. Who tackled him? It was a beauty. Duncan. Well, that was big, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah great tackle by Mitch Duncan, Bruce. 
goal-saving tackle. Well done, take a bow. Into the middle, so oh, Selwood gets a free oh. here. Straight away. Hold there. So, all of a sudden, some free land here for Menzel to operate in. Long ball. Now, Hawkins in the one-on-one, -on -one, but it wasn't kicked to the correct side. He kicked it to the boundary side. Hawkins wanted it back on the inside. And I know you can't get everything you want as a big forward, but just kicking it to the advantage side is a big help. It's so important, BT, you're right, but gee, Daniel Tarley is good. Once he gets position and he reads where that kick is going, he does not let that position up so strong. Jacobs, look at Selwood trying to clamp him up, Sloan in low, Stewart there, and a Rory Sloan free. Sloan and Selwood to miss their corner, just there, attack on the ball. They just have no fear. They're prepared to take the hard hit, both of them. One for the Cats, a captain, and one for the Crows. An absolute beauty. Crouch down the line. Adelaide sitting on a good lead. Geelong, though, have... You feel like they're still in the contest, in a way. I mean, the scoreboard suggests maybe otherwise. It does a little bit, and it's the likes of Selwood and Duncan and Dangerfield and Motlop who are trying to will... Geelong back into this, but just feel like the Crows have had and got a more even spread across the ground with blokes like this, Rory Sloan just leading the way. Probably should have got a free kick there. So, so Dangerfield, Crouch and Selwood all get involved, and then an up and under from Douglas. High ball, Mitch Duncan had to sit under it for a long time. It's Rory Hall! And he handled it magnificently. Hall! Yeah, Hall! in the 20s, I reckon, is... It's very gettable a lead in the 20s. It's just a goal off, though, Bruce. Like, yep. it's 35 points. Parfit threading his way through here and goes wide to Buse. Buse trying to claw that in with the one hand. It's one on three. Clever knock back in. Lang was a little late arriving. Buse is doing his best. Parfit was in there. Little knock on to Cockatoo. Cockatoo's a Smith. Smith bundles it out. Here's a chance for Mackey. Crouch got him in a tackle. Picked up in the end. It might have been Collar Jasney. The bounce here. Lever did wonderfully well with a difficult ball. And now Menzel. Menzel to Lang. It's all on the line here for the catch now. They need to score next. They've got a half a minute to do it. Here in the third quarter, and a free will go the way here of Adelaide, I think. Jakey Lever, yep. He's put two huge tackles on Jakey Lever late in this quarter. And he runs his measure and then kicks it as far as he can, getting it out of the danger zone. Seward's little give. Minigola couldn't take it. Crouch does, gets it to Watton, and the swing man goes down the line, and good hands from Jenkins. And Adelaide may have done enough. They have done enough. We've got a half an hour to find it out. It's a big lead. It's going to take something remarkable from that man and his team. The three-quarter time in the preliminary final, Adelaide leads Geelong, 94 to 59. Away from the promised land. They've lost their last four preliminary finals since they won one in 1998. A club that's gone through a heck. We heard Leighton Hewitt at the start of the night talking about resilience in his footy club. Cheryl, his mum next to him, and Clint, his dad. He's a big, big fan of this club. Rory Sloan, one of his absolute favourites. And for Andrew Mackey, who started his football not too far from here with Glenelg Footy Club, and for Tommy Lonigan. Maybe, maybe, it's the last 30 minutes of two fabulous careers. And looking like it will be, and they'll want to go out just giving their absolute all right to the final siren, regardless of what that result is. Andrew Mackey and Tom Wellington both having wonderful careers. The Adelaide Crows, they want to finish big. Just put this one away early. First 10 minutes of this quarter, they can make the last 15 or 20 minutes of this quarter a lot easier for themselves and out. Telstra Tracker has Mark Blitzarves back where we expect him to be. Number one and K's covered, but to some of the work rate of those Adelaide players, Rory Laird, 11 K's, McKay, 11 K's. Shows how important they are to this Adelaide Crows lineup, but that's not massive K's covered by those players compared to other games. But that's be probably because the Crows have just controlled so much of the footy tonight. So it's about to go for the last time here. 
No more Adelaide Oval AFL this season, but they get themselves into the grand final. Ten of the last minor premiers have done it, and they're certainly well on their way here, the Adelaide Crows. Only Richmond has been waiting longer than the Crows to reach a grand final. Can they get there? Mitch Duncan, long handball to Joel Selwood. He had to go into dangerous territory, though, to retrieve that. Jacobs, Sloan thought he was under a bit more pressure than perhaps he was. Lynch with a handball wide, taken in the tackle by Douglas. G. Buse has been very, very impressive. Got it to Tui. Tui along the line and turnover here. We'll see Crouch steady things down. Buse has been good, BT. Combative. Worked hard. Atkins, normally a good kick. Oh, that one too close to the line. No, it's okay. Just Sloan took the mark, thought it might have been out. He bangs it in Walker's direction. Bets at the back. Eddie, Eddie held on to. Ball coming loose. Jenkins kicks the goal. Jenkins mops it up. Do you know what? They're on their way to the G. They're on their way to the G. So, couple for Josh. He's just that sort of guy. He can, he's so hard to stay. He's a big last quarter goal scorer and last half, but he gets on the end of a fair bit, doesn't he? He does it well. We talked pre match, no top 10 draft picks for a dozen years. A lot of recycled players. Jenkins would have been in play. Bits, of course, of Carlton involved there. They've done it unbelievably well. What a culture this football club has, and they are grand final bound. What a performance it's been. Against the Cats, who, coming into this game, we all thought matched up pretty well on the Crows. They went whack in the first quarter. And they have been so impressive tonight. No currently listed play, a pro player has played in a grand final. Their coach, Don Pike, of course, played in three. Stewart, wide, looking for Lang. And they want out of bounds on the full, but they won't get it. Jakey Lever done a good job tonight. That's McGovern, of course, who missed out. I wonder how bad that hamstring is, and I wonder whether he'll make it to the big dance. He'll be doing everything he can to get that one right. I've never heard of a one-week hamstring, though. High tackle, Adelaide. You can only hope that it was a bit of tightness. Jeez, it's a strain, he's no chance. Sloan. And Laird, who started the game so well and has continued on, mind you. He's backwards to Hardigan. Hardigan across the ground here, waiting the arrival of the footy Brown. Thought about Talia in the middle. Decided against it will go wider to walker as he presents up that may well be out of bounds on the full and it is packed house here tonight and there's a portion of them have a look at the adelaide jumpers in amongst that lot you're going to be excited in a minute because we're going to put the crowd up bt and it will excite you right being a connoisseur of that sort of thing so adelaide with 100 points on the board which has been a benchmark for them this season So Stewart, Lever does that so well, doesn't he? He's the best fister in the game, isn't he? He's one of the more aggressive spoilers when he needs to be. He gives it a good old belt. Smith. Selwood and Sloan. Joel Selwood been brave tonight. He's had a crack. He's done everything he possibly can to try and get his team back into this one. Lynch did the boot smother then. His boot, I mean, to Jenkins. Jenkins to Betts. Betts, the little handball. Umpire almost got in the way. Jenkins finishes with it. He's got three. Very, very unselfish. The Adelaide players led by Eddie Betts. Yeah, Eddie Betts, he's, he's a star, but you're right. He always gives it when he should give it. 
And more often than not, the man that kicked the goals, the, uh, well, he gets the reward for it. Well, he started it, Josh, and he knew as soon as he gave it to Eddie, Eddie would give it back. Because that's what Eddie does. Here we go. 100 points again for the Crows, as you said, Bruce. This season, including tonight, 15 wins, one draw when they hit that magical mark. Impressive. So that draw against Collingwood at the MCG. So, Liggy, yep, they've, they've got that benchmark, and they are such a scoring team. It's the one thing that you always feel they're a chance. We were at the MCG that day. They were 52 points behind Collingwood at one stage. We were able to come back. Was that that game watching it? Unbelievable comeback it was, Bruce. So here's Otten. He just sets it up. Cameron doesn't go. Walker, little handball. Lonigan, Stewart, Tui. What a fine season he's had. Hasn't missed a game for five years. Selwood so got it. Well, they're going to be beaten tonight, but the captain can hold his head high. Belts the ball forward. Menzel at the back, Hawkins a long, long way out. What can he do? He kicks to centre half forward or a full forward nearly Otten and Henderson swats down there, switch down there and the ball goes out in the forward pocket. Is that deliberate? Is it OK? He's out of control, that man. He's really annoyed by the decision. He just, uh, he went a little psycho. <laughs> 47 points up. They don't want to give them anything. Come on. <laughs> Have a look at that hill, it's jammed. Percentage doesn't count in the finals, does it? <laughs> look at all the pointing moves. So Henderson from the pocket. Across for a behind. That's a goal. It's a goal, well done. Sorry about that. I think uh, he just drifted forward there, Lockie Henderson, heading down back again now. Drifted forward with the play and took advantage of it. Nice finish from the boundary. Too little too late, unfortunately, for the Cats, but nice goal. Just his fourth goal for the year here, Henderson, after Otten pinged. And the nice inside out right foot banana and clutches the hamstring there. I don't know whether that's a bit of cramp. Here's Dangerfield tonight. Got it to Motlop, able to run. So fluent a runner he is. Ball to the pocket to Taylor. Left foot to remember. Up against the boundary line, had to get rid of it in the nick of time. Hardigan got it back, Harry. Spun it out somehow to Menzel. Intercepted by Laird. He just mungles it as far out of the danger zone as he can get. Well done by Orton, Henderson there as well, and Knight happy to find the boundary. And we'll throw it in. So this crowd tonight is the all-time record. So a record for any AFL game here, 53,817. It was the perfect storm, wasn't it? It was Geelong, it was Dangerfield, it was the Crows, great weather. It was a preliminary final above all of that. So it back to Dangerfield. Oh, no. oh, oh. And he squares it up. So Sloan and Dangerfield, eh? Both coming off the ground together there. And this typifies Geelong's night. The missed kick, the missed opportunity, the turnover. Adelaide pounce. Colin Jasney getting back. He's under any pressure, and this can make you do funny things like fumble. Betts over the top to Walker. Knight into the open goal. Adelaide goes berserk. They're a team, aren't they? They really are. They... They just are prepared to spread it around. I mean, Betts is so unselfish. Walker's unselfish. Yeah. They, 
Don't have a long tail. They're, they're going to. Well, they're a good side. They're a good side. The two skippers, eh? Yeah, come together. A little bit of acting there from uh, Tex. Tex recently voted by his peers as the best captain for two years in a row. I reckon Joel might have won that award a couple of occasions to great leaders of their respective clubs. Brad Crouch to McKay out wide. So Adelaide 112 to 65. Abuses kick. McKay goes back. Around the corner from Brown. Down to Betts. So constructive Betts. Walker protects the ball. It was a good kick and it was a good mark. You picked Walker out at the start of the night, Wayne. You wrote your Fairfax article about him today. How's he gone? He's been solid. He hasn't... Uh, what has he had coming up for his 12th disposal? So... Been solid without being a being a star, but he, this is the thing about this side. It doesn't have to be a star for them to win. Gee, that's a good kick. Well, he's deserved that. He gave the last one off. Well, a little while back, the late Phil Walsh sat him down and said, "Who do you reckon should be captain of this footy club?" And Tex gave him the list. He said, now, nah, you're the one that should be captain. He said, bloody hell. And he went and sat in the car and said, I've got to think about this. Well, I think he did. And the rest is history. Well, Phil this... Walsh believed in him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is a timely in a prelim where you can really soak it up. You now know you're going into a grand final. Just a, just a great feeling. Yes. And with this crowd roaring behind you, they will be feeling pretty special, these Adelaide players. But... Tex, as you said, hasn't had to dominate, but I've loved his aggressive approach, his leadership. Yep. They've got on board with what he does. The Crows will have won 10 of 14 finals played in Adelaide. Cameron, who ignited the Adelaide Oval early in this game. Here's Lynch. He is the linchpin. He fumbles that. Joel Selwood, little firm to Motlop. Back and got it. McKay looking for Jenkins. Jenkins to Crouch, back to Jenkins. Motlop comes at him, forced him to give the ball up, and a free Hold kick in. will go the Adelaide way of Adelaide here. Him. Jenkins. He's going to get a free there, Jenkins. He's oh. Run for the short ball to Cameron. Maybe trying to make amends there. As now Hawkins in the middle. Shovels it off to Stanley. Stanley to Lang. Lang to Motlop. Motlop, 55 out, plonks it up, gives Harry Taylor a chance, but what a punch it was from Hardigan, but didn't quite get the job done. Harry had a second go and then a third go. And what about Lever? Love that ball. Picked it up and put it down the throat of McKay. A hard running McKay with a couple of bounces. Can he get it over the back? A beautiful kick to his captain. And then Walker with that. Look at that kick. Kicked it about 70 metres. Cameron nearly, nearly, he's going to kick five. He's going to kick five. He has. He's been more than a handful. He's been the star of the night. Don't you love it? This crazy city that loves its footy. Once again, started from defence. Yep. As you said, BT, Lever, and just their beautiful ball use. They come back in, change the angle again, Lingy. They don't go down the line, they change the angle so often. Back through the corridor to the captain, Tex Walker, and then a beautiful kick to space. Just allowed Cameron, probably, probably could have marked it. Didn't matter in the end. He's been brilliant tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> very happy with things. Interesting. And they're very excited here at the moment. I think everyone in Adelaide right now is saying, yes, doesn't matter who you kiss. Betts, ball knocked out of the tackle. Just grab the person next door, shake his hand, cuddle him, do what you want. Because it is a night of celebration here at the Adelaide Oval. You stay there. Let it go. I've got the kick. You stay there. I've got the kick. Crouches in the cell, which we knew they'd be at each other. 
Let it go, Geelong. Joel Selwood looks like he may have done the left hamstring too. He's just walking slowly from the ground. Yeah, uh, his year is done. Yeah. It may either be that or his foot problem. So does. Yeah, it could well be the foot too. He does not look comfortable. You're quite right. Long ball here for the cat, Stanley. Rises couldn't mark. Good yeah. kick out of the pack. Henderson's going to get on this. So the cats coming forward in big numbers and the ball wide to Mitch Duncan. And there is Selwood. He's tried hard all night to skip up. 29 touches, a goal, 17 contested possessions. But unfortunately for the Cats, 16 players played in last year's preliminary final. For them, another painful, poor performance in a prelim final. They're going to have to search for the answer over summer again. This crowd here is just ripping themselves into a frenzy at the moment they are thoroughly enjoying the night and every moment here they've got plenty of time to soak it up 11 minutes they've got knowing that they're in the grand final from here on in that is one part you've got to love when you know you're there and they'll be booking plane tickets they'll be booking buses they'll be organizing carpools in that last 11 minutes bt they will be invading the mcg next Saturday afternoon. So they may come up against another fanatical mob. We're not too sure, are we? That's to be played out tomorrow. Smith's little give him and goal of back to Lang. He kicked the opening goal of the second half. It looked like the Cats had half a chance at that stage. Talia, after Stanley couldn't quite. Atkins did well on Hawkins. And then a little gives a beauty to Walker, who really is enjoying the last quarter of the Texan, isn't he? As he goes wide. Bruce, the local paper here today, uh, I think there were 17 pages devoted to the Crows and the advertiser. I reckon they'll top that tomorrow with ease. Well, you know what it's like. You work day in and day out, so there's both radio and TV in this town. It'll be an incredible feeling tomorrow morning here, as it is tonight. So, Lever. I guess McGovern's the big one, isn't it? Um, so it is McGovern's the big question of the week story, now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a story, Bruce. Look, the club has said officially, uh, just at halftime, look, they, uh, they do remain hopeful that it might be a chance, but I don't think there's uh, really any chance he's going to play. You talked about the lack of uh, top 10 draft picks. The most potent forward line in the competition, when you check this out, Jenkins cost them pick 31 in a trade to Essendon. Lynch cost them pick 37 from St Gilda. They picked McGovern, who you spoke about, with pick 43. Taylor Walker came here as a 16-year-old on the New South Wales Scholarship Program. Cameron's a rookie and Eddie Betts was a free agent. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal forward line. Gee, uh, you've got it all there, Sodas, that's for sure. And Adelaide going on their merry way. By the way, they've never lost a grand final, Bruce. They've won the two in the AFL. They won last year's AFLW. Yep. Erin Phillips, by the way, has come home from the US, especially today, to witness this game. She'll be in the rooms after the game. We look forward to that. Here's Menengola around the corner. Long ball, Hawkins hasn't been able to glove him all night. Hasn't had a lot of quality ops. And here is the Joel Selwood. Final part of the injury in the middle of the ground there. A little slip there. And that, I reckon, is definitely that problem that he's gone into the game with. Gee, played a great game. I, mean, I know they were on the back foot and he was playing catch-up footy. But he dug deep, didn't he? As you always expect he would. Collar Jasny. Great smother from Greenwood and Parfitt over the boundary line. Well, just as we looked at uh, Joel Selwood coming in with that ankle problem he had there, we know that uh, coming off the ground now, Andy Otten has just limped off and he's in the hands of the trainers. Tom Lynch there, just got that head knock. He came from the ground as well, so does, uh, with the doctors getting checked out for a little bit of concussion. So no doubt they'll keep a close eye on how he pulls up during the week with the concussion protocol. Dangerfield going for a third goal, and he's missed it. And even he can have a smile. It's a strange night for him now, isn't it? The champion at Adelaide in 2015, the club champion, the champion and Brownlow medalist last year. In the prelim final, he said it's the biggest game of my life coming in. His second quarter was one to behold tonight, wasn't it? He was unbelievable in that second term. But he knows the team he played so much footy for is on their way to the grand final. Stanley. Putting it into the spot there. 
Then a goal up, runs, marks, plays. Ends up going on the non preferred, and it's a beautiful finish from him as well. Two last quarter goals here for the Cats. And it has been a blistering Adelaide Crows right from the start tonight when they kicked six goals to one in the first quarter. Cameron was electric, Betts, Lynch, you name them, they're all involved early. And Bruce, you mentioned with Paddy Dangerfield leaving the Adelaide Crows and the funny feeling he'd have. Gee, the players who've stepped up in the midfield in his absence for the Crows have been so impressive. Led by that man, Rory Sloan, but Matty Crouch again, up to 28 disposals, 14 of those contested. Brad Crouch, 27 disposals, 17 of those contested. We just have not missed a beat after one of the best in the game left and went to the Cats. They have been superb at Adelaide midfield. So Douglas out of the centre, kicking to full forward. Tui Knight to harass him. Otten back out there, Tui in a boundary throw in. So for Mackie and Lonigan, it is the end of the long journey as we look at the Crows there and all the smiles. And just good news too, to just update Tom Lynch back out on the ground. We were worried about that head knock, but he's out on the ground, so obviously all OK. The sad way to end for Tom Lonigan, Andrew Mackie. Wonderful careers at the Cats. This is not the way they thought it would end. Sloan, so strong. Jenkins, so pokes it almost forward. Mackey held up. And then Henderson under pressure. And Walker to have a kick from the pocket. So skillful, you think he's at least 50% chance from here. What a kick! He's kicked two goals in the last quarter. So we started the night talking about all the things that this footy club has had to endure and the tragedy and where they've been able to get themselves to. Uh, it's just absolute recognition for the strength of this football club, the leadership within the football club, one of their biggest supporters there, but the players they lost, Phil Davis, Jack Gunston, Paddy Dangerfield, Nathan Bock, Kurt Tippett, and obviously the tragedy of their coaches, Dean Bailey and also Phil Walsh. But somehow they've stayed strong through all that. They've stayed near the top of the ladder and now they are at the top of the ladder and heading to the biggest dance next week. This unbelievable resilience from this Adelaide Crows football club. So, Duck, you're down to the last six or seven minutes. You know you're in the grand final. How do you keep yourself safe? And what's going through your mind as a player that's going to play in it? Well, the problem with that, if you're out on the ground and you go half-hearted, that's sometimes when you can get injured. So you've got to keep going hard at the footy. There's no doubt about that. But... There's no question all the players out on the ground right now are soaking this up. They know they're going into grand final. And, and do they want to be on the ground or off the ground? Oh, no, I think you still want to be on the ground. Yeah. I don't think you want to... But if, you know, you do get asked to come off, you're certainly not going to... <laughs> and the other thing... Over the top, Laird. Start of the game on fire. Had a good one. Little handball there, beautifully gloved by Men and Gola. Sharp hands, Duncan. She's out there again, John Silver. What is he doing out there? The man is unbelievable. Lever's told to play on, and he does, and turns around and tries to spot up Betts, but misses him. Lonigan to Lang. Lang from 45 misses. What is it would Joel be, Selwood doing? It would be his mindset that he would not... He would not want to be on the bench when this game finishes because of how bad a loss it is for the club. He would have told the doctors, just let me go back out there, I should be with my team, which... Isn't necessarily the best thing for his ankle, but that would just be what's going through his mind. Yeah, call it silly, call it stubborn, whatever you like, but that's just what he would be thinking. Captain never gets off a sinking ship. Yeah. Gee, well, Duck's come up with an oldie there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, Duck. <laughs> Mackie tried to spin and turn, wanting just a last little touch or two. I'd love to see you on that <laughs> ship, Duck. <laughs> I'd love to see whether you go lifeboat bound or not. <laughs> Tui. Back to Motlop, and then Motlop spearing the ball into the heart of the centre square. 
Cut off by Men Menengola, cut off. Cameron to Crouch. Crouch's little kid, Scott Silver, cuts it off. I guess only those who have captain BT can answer that. Oh, boy. Uh, Selwood over the top. Hardigan. That was a fairly uncalled for <laughs> dagger to my heart. Crouch. Texan. Jenkins. Who's got three and he's going to line up for four and he sends a high one. Big Jenko's got four. Looking to reach their third grand final to a company 97 and 98. They're going to do it. And only, as I said earlier tonight, Richmond has been waiting longer than the Crows to reach a grand final, and that'll unfold tomorrow. BT, good signs for the Crows. They do have Andy Otten back on the deck. He obviously hasn't played since that round 19 draw against Collingwood. A little bit sore in the calves, but it's OK. Well, that just sums the night up, doesn't it? 124 kilometres in attack. That's how far they've run while they've had the ball in their hands. They've worked hard to link up. And Geelong a long, long way behind, and that's why it's the 62-point margin. Zach Sam, hold the lead up. Impressive, brilliant performance by the Adelaide Crows into the big dance. So the Cats forward 50. Hawkins goes to ground. Stanley, quiet night. Lever, Laird. What a game he's played again, Laird. Once again, just that short chip. They just have not missed a target tonight with those short kicks. No Brody Smith, no Mitch McGovern. No questions asked. You know, big outs, big outs. And they've covered them brilliantly. Seedsman's first half colossal. Charlie Cameron stood up in that absence, that run, creativity, and ultimately kicking five goals. Unbelievable performance. Push out, but... Betts. To Cameron. There goes the speed machine. Beautifully weighted little ball. Finds Atkins. Three minutes 50 remaining in the game. Anyone for Adelaide out there, Doug, that you think is under some sort of threat to hold their position or not? Well, well the only one I could think of is the man that came in to replace McGovern, and that's Otten. Right. So and that's if McGovern. And that's right. if McGo yeah. McGovern's fit. But if he's not, then he, he, he holds right. his spot. Right. So Atkins have to kick this from outside 50. Won't quite get the journey. Seedsman looking dangerous and the punch in the end. Even if Mitch McGovern's not right to go, Doug, is Miller a chance just for that extra run on the MCG? Well, I think that depends who you're playing. If you're playing the Tigers, yeah. maybe speed is more important. If you're playing GWS, maybe, maybe height. So, there is Lynch. Good smother by Sirwood. It's remarkable that Joel's still out there. Two goals in the opening turn by Lynch. Over 30 for the 66th time, Sirwood. Sloan and Walker together. The two leaders of this footy club on the field. Meningola, game tackle. Has to squeeze it out. Silwood still fighting to the end. Jacobs gets him down. I ran into Sam last night at a function. That lady said, I'm really nervous, but it's a good nerves. He said, we've done everything right. He said, I can't wait to get there tomorrow night. He started well, didn't he? Yeah. It was important. Well, this, this performance by the Crows tonight dispels the bye in the last round. So they've played very little footy in the space of four weeks. And Duck gets everybody off Don Pike's back about going to the Gold yep. Coast. <laughs> because that has been a massive story here. They do look tan tonight, though. <laughs> well, it was, I think Don was pretty happy it was 30 degrees in Adelaide today. Talia, good kick to Laird. This will be possession number 30 for Rory Laird. Out the back, Tom. What a wonderful game he has had with the Crouch boys, the leading possession winners. For the Crows, Brad Crouch 29, Matty Crouch 28. Just controlled and owned the footy. 
Laird. The back line's been brilliant all year. Adelaide, so consistent. They've had Alex Keith to come in and play a role there as well, and he fitted in nicely, and he's a good spare for them, and he's a good up-and-comer as well. And they all know their role. Daniel Talia, just, he's happy to lock down and has absolutely beaten Tom Hawkins tonight. Jake Lever can come off and help. Jake Kelly plays a really important role, and then the creative players can run off the back of all of those players, knowing exactly what they're there to do. So they're all good at something different, aren't they? Absolutely. I think at the start of the year, we thought they had a weakness. It was probably in the middle of the ground, but the emergence of the Crouch Crouch, boys. Yeah. Here's one of them they right just now. Great. Very, very, very good players. Atkins and Brown are just two unassuming sort of guys. You walk, you walk past them in the street, you wouldn't know, would you? But they just are two of the most consistent players they have on their list, Adelaide. Not one player on the Adelaide list has played in a grand final. And they're all going to get the opportunity to do that next weekend. Hughes was in amongst it there. Crouch, Motlop. Sprints away with the footy. Had a cracking game last week, Motlop. You wonder whether his name will be mentioned in trade talk again, which starts on Monday. Puff it. Just long and lang muscles. McKay under the footy. Not one of the record-breaking crowd here tonight has left. 53,817, a record for an AFL game. And every one of them still in the house. You don't see that very often, Bruce, do you? So, Lang. You mentioned the emergence of the Crouch brothers. Matt Crouch is up to 31 possessions. 30 possessions for the 10th game in a row. What a season he's had, but also delivering in finals. Not just getting it against the lower teams, delivering in big finals. Yeah, 18 times this year, 30. 10 in a row, Lee East. Been super. Collar Jasney to Stewart, and then Stewart off a step. Seconds remaining. Kicks to fall forward, bubbling about, Brown and Menzel. Menzel gets hold of him. A stoppage, but no stopping the Crows. Started with a couple of quick goals, Cameron and Betts. It's been 19 long years, but Adelaide, Adelaide are in the grand final. Absolutely crazy over there, won't they? 
mate, they've got their, they've got their footy trip at the moment, so oh, they'd be watching now. And good, work, good luck, boys, but uh, hey, let's go next week. Tex, tell us about this group. How resilient have they been? Oh, mate, it's one of the most resilient footy clubs I've ever been involved in. We've been through so much as a group, and it's just created a, a stronger bond. And our culture of this footy club is uh, unbelievable, and I want to play forever, but um, yeah, it's just outstanding. So it's, so much to talk about you doing a 15-day break. You all went up to the Gold Coast and worked well as a group, and then you've been able to come out, and the start was remarkable. It set the winner. Yeah, we had to, we had to start well. We knew Geelong that they were in great form from last week, but um, started well. I think we kicked seven or eight goals in the first quarter, and that just set us up for the last three quarters and consistently uh, competed. Um, obviously, Geelong got two boys that are going out tonight, and they've had great careers, so I wish them all the best. Tex, well, Captain, mate, is it right now? Is it relief? Is it absolute excitement? What's the overwhelming emotion right now? Oh, mate, excited. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I've never played in the grand, AFL Grand Final, so let's go out there and win it, eh? Well done, mate. Congratulations. Great year. He's not the only one. None of his teammates have either. So all of them, all of them go there for the first time next Saturday. What about this fella, Ben, say, eh? Eddie? Down to you, so it's because you're with him right now. Eddie Betts, you're going to an AFL Grand Final. Speechless, man. Oh, 13 years. 13 years and all you want to do is play in the Grand Final. Oh, we're finally there. Eddie, I know you made the move from Carlton. You've had an unbelievable time here, like you said, over those 13 years. You've never had a double chance in finals. You've never been to a prelim final. And it has just been an unbelievable performance, a dominant performance against a quality team. Yeah, it's fantastic, brother, boys. We knew we had to come out, start well. That's what we did. Um, we got, what can I say? We, we got one more now. One more. We're going to the grand final. Uh, we'll speak to us. There's a little man out there called Charlie Cameron. And when he first came to the footy club, I know you and your wife Anna, he would not even eat his vegetables. You had to hide them in the meat with him. He's kicked. Oh, he's been just fantastic tonight with his five. He's a superstar, Charles. I mean, going to be an absolute gun. To see him next week on the MCG with all that space. Gonna love watching him play. Eddie, congratulations, mate. 13 years and you're now going off to a grand final. Your time here in Adelaide has been absolutely sensational. Thank you, thank you. Very emotional, Eddie Betts, and an emotional Andrew Mackey and Tom Rodigan who just left the ground and got a rousing reception. But it's all about this team, the tri-coloured team. You don't see Don Pike like that too often, do you? I mean, he's he's generally poker-faced, keeps the cards close to his chest. We've seen some great shots. I mean, the danger field Sloan a moment ago was just a beauty, wasn't it? That respect. Sirwood limps away, but, God, he should be proud of what he did. I know he didn't get the result he wanted. But for Geelong, another crushing defeat in the preliminary final. But for the Crows, there, there is Paddy too, who we talked about so much in the lead up to the game. He said, it's the biggest match of my life. And uh, despite all his efforts in the second quarter, he couldn't turn it around. Hamish, we didn't know what to expect. I don't think we expected quite what we got. But one thing we know for sure, this is a very exciting footy club. And it's going to be a very excited time, town this week. And the build-up will be fabulous. I was just speaking to the Adelaide Crows media managers and there was some talk that the advertiser was going to run a 42-page spread from the build-up <laughs> to the grand final. That's not a number that's made up. That was being discussed outside. It highlights what it means to this town, this club. Yep, no, absolutely. And it's one of their, their biggest moments to win a preliminary final in Adelaide. And how quickly things change and how different right now these two clubs are. One is looking ahead and thinking of a third grand final and a third premiership from a third grand final. The other two hours ago was thinking about what could have been, but for Tommy Lonergan and Andrew Mackey, their last game has been played, nothing ahead. Lingy's going to go down and speak to those two about a career that's in the rear view mirror. Yeah, absolutely, hey. And so Adelaide, first team into the grand final, been top of the table for most of the year, heaviest scoring side. We know one thing for sure, Whoever they play against next Saturday at the MCG is going to have to kick a lot of goals because that's what this team do. Good on you, mate. It's over to you. Thanks, Bruce. Terrific call. Well done. Bruce will be back on Monday night. Brownlow medal, but right now, 
assume Wayne Carey and Cameron Ling. These are the minutes and possibly the hours that you get to enjoy before it all gets serious again. Yeah, no doubt about that. You, as we said, they knew they were going to a grand final, you know, well into that last quarter. But when the siren goes, it, it, there is an element of relief and obviously excitement knowing that uh, well, all of these boys are going through to their first grand final in. Yeah, absolutely right, Duck. Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling because um, in about, probably not even a couple of hours' time, in about half an hour, 45 minutes' time, these players are going to switch straight over to, OK, I've got to recover. What are we going to learn from this one? What are we going to do next week? But for this brief period of time, they can enjoy it exactly like Eddie's doing right now in front of a home crowd, adoring fans and all the staff, the coaches of the Adelaide Football Club would be so proud of what their team's delivered this year, what they've delivered tonight. And they're going to belt out this song as soon as they get down into the rooms. And they're going to have that moment of just exhausted relief and happiness that they are going to be playing on the MCG in that one big day. Unfortunately for that man, Brody Smith, he'd have mixed feelings because he would be so happy for his teammates, so proud of his great mates. But just deep down, hidden away, he'd be shattered that he couldn't be part of it all. But Obviously, a selfless type of person is never going to let it be about him and how disappointed he is. He was always going to be there for his teammates, and that's been the attitude of the Adelaide Crows all year. And that's what they're playing for, Hame. You almost don't want to look at it, Doug. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, Not until it's yours. No, exactly right. It's, uh, oh, look, it's incredible. They, you, can't, you can't explain, Lee, can you? That the feeling that they're having right now to get through to the grand final. I often say, and we said it before the game, that prelims are often harder to win. Because you just want to get there, you just want to be there on grand final. Grand final day, anything can happen, but you've got to get there first, and, and they're there. And you often play tight and nervous in yeah. preliminary finals because you are so desperate to be there the following week. But the Crows didn't play like that early. No. They set this game up with just that brilliant first quarter, and there was no tightness. It was just pressure, create turnovers, and they went bang with the ball in there. There was no sluggishness, was there? I mean, they came out fired up, they were clean, their ball use was absolutely brilliant. We spoke about how their efficiency, how they hit targets. Geelong weren't able to hit targets early, and this side was. They were faster, they were cleaner, they had options all around the ground, there were no holes anywhere. Six goals to one opening turn, 35 at half time. And that's he and Mitch McGovern, you just can't believe, two constants for the side. And for the first time in almost two decades, they get to the final game of the season. I won't be a part of it. Down here in the Adelaide Rooms, and they belted that song out. Unbelievable. And as you could hear and see there, Big Source Jacobs and Rory Sloan getting amongst it there. Tex going around. I've seen Don Pike here earlier go up to Brody Smith. And you can see, I don't know whether the camera can get a shot over here at the moment. You can just see, here's the camera just here. Might try and just get a shot of Brody Smith just there, if he can, just on the crutches just there. And all of his teammates getting around him, of course, which is a very emotional thing. I saw him and Don Pike embracing before. And uh, there are hard luck stories with every grand final, of course, and this and perhaps the McGovern one is going to be interesting to see how that plays out as well. I have heard the hamstring 
is a little worse than perhaps we were thinking. So it may be that two players are very, very unlucky in missing out. You can see the players going in for their um, after-game meeting. That'll be a five or ten minute uh, process. You see McGovern there before as well. So they are all there. Huge crowd in the rooms here, as you can see. Plenty of people waiting media over there. A lot of the uh, reserve players there, you can see McGovern in amongst that as well. So they're all there. So we're going to come back. We're going to enjoy this. They'll, they'll be a good seven or eight minutes in that meeting in there, I would have thought, working out how they're going to handle next week. We'll be back here very, very shortly, speaking to everybody that we possibly can in the rooms. Charles, through to a grand final. How does it feel? Nah, it's unbelievable. I guess you've got to soak this moment up and enjoy it. Uh, it doesn't come around that much, so nah, I'm just trying to enjoy it, enjoy the week, so yeah. How many grand finals have you played in in your footy career? Uh, probably played one. Yeah, that was, that was at, um, in Newman, but that was about it. Probably uh, just be baseball and stuff, but that's about it. Not much. It's a great uh, achievement just to get to the grand final, but what's the mindset of the boys now? Pikey would have just uh, brought you into the room. What, what's the message now? Oh, you just said we just ticked off another step, so um, next step is now is go to the granny and try and win it. But I guess we just got to, I guess, like I said, enjoy the moment. Um, it's going to be a big week, it's not going to be like a normal week, I guess. But um, yeah, just got to enjoy it. And yeah. You kicked five goals in a prelim. How are you feeling coming in tonight? Probably had a couple of quieter weeks by your yeah. standards. What got you up for tonight? Oh, it's just probably the belief. Um, just had a lot of belief from the coaches and stuff. And they just said, just go out. Have fun and just do what you do, bring your weapon. So, um, yeah, I'll just try to go out and have some fun. And I guess the ball was just coming my way and I ended up getting five goals. I guess you got to make the most of those opportunities. You took a nice hanger as well. Your eyes darted like you knew you had a good run at it. Can you talk us through it? Oh, I was just uh, looking at a few boys. I was like, that's all right, not bad. I hit me in the head. I was like, I thought it was a concussion, but no, nah, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Um, did you hear the chant go up as well? We know Eddie's got his own chant. Could you hear the crowd? Uh, I had a look around, but I didn't really hear it. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. I thought there was a chance. So yeah. that little Charlie chant going. So Eddie and now Charlie. Yeah, hopefully. See how we go. What was the noise like out there tonight? Because it just walking through the stands, it just seemed unbelievable. What was it like being out in the middle of it? Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was electric. Um, when, I, well, when we kicked that first goal, it was unbelievable. The crowd got into it. Then we got a few goals after that. It was just like unbelievable. Just got a few goosebumps out there. But yeah, you just gotta make the most of it. You mentioned it's going to be a really big week. The club hasn't been to a grand final in 19 years. How is the club going to approach it? Oh, I'm not sure. It's my first grand final, so I um, don't know yet. See what happens during the week. But yeah, I guess you enjoy it, like I said before. Awesome. Well done, Charles. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Brian. Uh, just take us into the rooms after your first winning prelim, Doug. Oh, it's just it's excitement, and as you said, Lingy, unfortunately, a lot of excitement. They've they've run around the ground. They've you know been celebrated by their supporters. Unfortunately, it's about 20 minutes from now. They'll go into that meeting. Don Pike will say, "Well done, boys. We're into a grand final. Enjoy it." And in about 20 minutes' time, you click straight over to saying, "Well, now we're in a grand final. Now we have to start preparing, and and, and we've got it. that's the game now that is in front of you, and that uh, obviously you want to win more than anything." In the world. It's that brief, is it? It, it is that brief because yep. they, they know they've got unfinished business. It's next week that they want to be feeling like that and then they can celebrate it for weeks after that. The coach will have a big role to play in that meeting, just as you said. It's telling them to enjoy it and then saying, okay, this is what we've got to do. Also, the GM of footy and a couple of the other staff around will have important roles now to, st to roll out what the logistics of the week is going to look like. Obviously, they've got Brownlow Medal Night, they've got the Grand Final Parade, when they're going to come to Melbourne and prepare. So that's all done for them, so the players can ignore all of that and then just concentrate on what they've got to do, which is training as well as they can. First of all, recovering, training as well as they can, and then going out and playing good footy. You don't want them worrying about tickets, you don't want them worrying about Grand Final Parades, anything like that. Some really other strong key figures in that football department will take care of all of that. Their phone in about 30 minutes when they actually get out of the room and then they're allowed to turn their phones on will be going absolutely berserk. They'll have cousins they didn't realise they had and they'll be asking for all sorts of things. Folks they can't remember from school. Especially tickets. Yeah. Be, uh, they, you get a lot of those phone calls. It's a pretty special time. Not one crow has ever been and played in a grand final. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Amazing. We'll take a break, Don. Pike, Chris, Scott. We'll talk with the players. Brian's just going to go roaming. It was an unstoppable performance from the Crows tonight. 
They didn't allow the Cats to get into the game. They're going to get an opportunity to win their third premiership. They're two from two. The Crows will play the Giants or the Tigers next Saturday afternoon. Well, the contrast, Geelong, season over, reflection tomorrow, disappear from the club within about 72 hours and think about 2018 and for the Crows, well the hype and the excitement's just getting rolling, hey, to believe what the players will be thinking and feeling now. Brian, let's, oh Brian, oh, let where is Brian? Oh, Brian. Very, where are you? Very noisy in here, this is the corporate room that's next door to the, uh, the players change room, so you can see through the glass, as you take a bit of a spin around here, you can see most most of the crowd here so this is a corporate only room can you believe the noise in here is unbelievable but this room is run by the great tony modra so it is um i'm likely to knock one of these blokes over in a minute so we'll get out of there and uh, so that's in there so that's the corporate room that tony modra runs let's go into the adelaide crows room which is just here you can see a few people starting to mill around but we'll come out here now and just have a look inside here if we can and uh, big Josh there on the left hand side. He's, uh, he's very happy with what's going on. Let's see, I might go over here. I can see Leighton Hewitt over here. So come with me and we'll try and get a hold of Leighton over here as of course our Davis Cup captain and they went down last week and he's here right now. Leighton, how, what, are, what are you thinking right at the moment? Uh, how proud I am, uh, not only of the players, but the, the collective group, you know, um, there's su such a high standard with the culture of this football club for so many years, uh, the adversity that they've had to come back from the last few years as well, uh, all these guys at this football club deserve this and uh, they've given themselves an opportunity next week. Yeah, the opener tonight that you voiced for us, the word resilience, they have been incredible in that area. Yeah, absolutely, uh, that defines what this team really is all about and the way they've bounced back and kept doing it, uh, especially the last couple of years, I couldn't be prouder. Um, you know, they, they deserve to have this opportunity, but you know, now they're in with a good chance. To... Have you booked a ticket to Melbourne? Oh, I live in Melbourne, so I had to book my flight down here this morning. So, uh, no, a lot of fun today. Is this your young fella? Yeah, my young fella. Uh, he loves Rory Sloan, so he's got the number nine on his Guernsey there. So he's... Don't worry about that. Can he, can he hit a tennis ball? Uh, he loves his sport, so tennis and footy. So Good on you, Leighton. Congratulations. Thank you. Leighton Hewitt, one of our greats. Davis Cup captain, of course, here as well. Might have a chat with the CEO, Andrew Fagan. Congratulations. You look a little uh, sort of stunned. Well, I am stunned. Uh, look, it's just a, I'm really proud, actually, really proud of the boys. It's a, a great performance, and you know, after 15 days off, you, you sort of hope they're going to start, start well, and they did that, and to perform as well as they did in front of 53,000 of our, our passionate supporters was just fantastic, so really proud of the footy club. Yeah, record crowd. Tell me, all clubs, all four clubs competing in the prelim final, do all their preparations for grand final week as a matter of course and a matter of planning. Logistics for this week, what are they looking like? Yeah, obviously plenty, so uh, there won't be too much sleep for, the, for those on the administration side. Uh, look, obviously we've got the Brownlow event that we'll, we'll hold here on Monday night. Uh, we'll have an open session for our fans here at Adelaide Oval on Wednesday morning, so it'll be a couple of hours for the, for the supporter base to come out. I imagine we'll get a pretty big crowd here at Adelaide Oval then. Uh, and then we'll be back here on Sunday post grand final win lose or draw to uh hopefully celebrate a really good week so look, and in between there's there's just everything that we can do to support the the boys and give them every chance to be well prepared for saturday afternoon you are very very excited i can tell you're about to explode i am well i was exploding right throughout the course of that game so uh look we said that they, they, they started well they continued you know right throughout and said i couldn't be more proud of them and, and look proud of pikey he's uh he's prepared them really well not just this season but last season it's been a it's been a tough journey. We know about the, you know, what's happened at the footy club and uh, to come through and now make a grand final is, is fantastic, but we all know that that's only halfway, so you know, we'll be doing everything we can to finish it off next week.
Well done, man. Good on you. Thanks, Blake Teacher. The CEO of the Adelaide Football Club, Andrew Fagan, and the coach here, Don Pike. Pikey, congratulations. How are you feeling about it? Oh, fantastic. Boys were, boys were super tonight. You know, I thought just their effort and energy from the start was really high. And, um, you know, we had a few little, few little glitches along the way, but um, overall, really, really proud of them. You're right about the energy. It was absolutely explosive, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, look, it was amazing. The atmosphere out there in itself, you know, 53,500, you know, screaming Adelaide fans, which was, you know, you could hardly hear yourself. I was trying to talk to one of our guys on the bench downstairs, and he could hardly, he couldn't hear us, you know, that was that loud. So, uh, first couple of goals really set him off, and, um, you know, we ended up with great support. Is McGovern going to get up, do you reckon? Don't know, don't know. I've always spoken to him before, you know, he's obviously got a bit of work to do, but, um, you know, he's got an incentive now, so... I expect he'll give every every uh, give himself every chance, and we'll see how he comes uh, through the week. I saw you embracing Brody Smith. There's a hard luck story every grand final, isn't there? But it's so sad. Yeah, it is. And a guy who's you know played I think 100 odd games out of probably 105, I think, or maybe even less than that in the last uh, three years. So, yeah, look, it's it is sad for Brody. It's going and look, he, there'll be other guys who miss out on the side next week. It will have been really important in, in our journey so far. And. Um, for all the guys who miss out, I hope they feel as part of it. It's always hard. I don't know if you, if you don't plan it. Um, but, you know, it's important that we uh, recognise everyone in our squad and our team that's helped us get to this point. And um, uh, we've got a great opportunity. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, sir. Don Pike, very happy coach uh, there as well. You can see over here Andrew Dillon, of course, the legal counsel for the AFL, one of the big bosses there in charge of footy as well. He's down here. I saw Patrick Keane before. They are all here at the moment. And we're going over here, I think, uh, to see someone over here. May well see uh, Andy Richie Douglas here. He's uh, here with us. Hey Richie, who you got here, mate? Introduce us to the family. Brody Smith's old man. It's not my old man, but uh, probably drinks as much as my old man. He's a ripper. And who else is here? Oh, oh, Adelaide's here, Brian. It's a, it's a great feeling at the moment. My family's over there, so um, obviously you've got Fitzy. You've talked to him, I'm sure. But uh, no, it's great. It's a great feeling. We're pretty stoked to get over there next week and uh, going over to win. Well done. Thanks, Brian. Richie Douglas. Andy Otten over here, who came into the side, of course, Andy. Um, I don't want to get... Is this, who's this, mum and wife? Dad and my brother drove over today uh, from Melbourne, and my beautiful fiancé, as well. So you drove all the way from Melbourne today? Yeah, we drove 6 a.m. from this morning. Well, I came from Fife because I live in Frankston, so it took us nine hours. It's been awesome. It's unreal. And, and into the side, looks like you're probably going to stay there, given the injuries and, and uh, where they're at. Oh yeah, I found out Wednesday, so I was pretty pumped, so I told the parents and it was a bit late to get a flight, so I had to do the hard work and drive over, but, you know, come in, I just had to play my role, um, super pumped to, to be out there in the prelim, you know, in the grand final next week, one more to go. What, what do you make of him in the grand final? I'm very, very excited, it'll be wonderful, but he's worked so hard for the last 10 years and he's really stood up today and he's done well. Well, well there they are, the entire clan, well done, good on you Andy, well done, thank you mate. Fitzy! In a sentence, sum that up, mate. In a sentence. I've lost my voice, BT. This is the greatest. I love this club to death. This is the... I reckon this team's better than the 97-98 team. They just played out of their skins tonight, and I'm so confident about next week. You're going to cry. Oh, oh, mate, I'm welling up, BT. I love this club. We fly as one. Thanks, Fitzy. Uh, Matty Crouch, uh, just here. Here he is. Matty, congratulations, mate. Thanks, mate. Wow, you're in. Yeah, it's a great feeling. I think uh, when the final siren went, I couldn't believe the feeling out there. So the crowd was massive. It was a big occasion and we delivered, so it was good. One of you has played in a grand final. Your coach, of course, played in three of them. I guess you're going to draw a little from him. Yeah, we haven't, yeah. So it'll be, it'll be all new for us this week. So the uh, main thing is to embrace the week and really enjoy it. What about the improvement from you and your brother this year? I mean, I think it was Justin Reid said that this club is ha going to have to grow organically if players continue to leave. And, and you have through both of you guys. Yeah, I think yeah, everyone in the midfield, it's not just me and Brad, I think Hugh Greenwood and boys like that, Richie Douglas has had a great year, so um, I think everyone's sort of chipped in and, and done well, so I think our contest stuff tonight was great and we've been really good in that area. Well done. Thanks, Brian. Cheers. The Crouch Brothers doing uh, uh, an absolutely sensational job. There's uh, Tommy Lynch there. The, everything goes through Tom. Nothing goes forward without going through Tom. He's, uh, he gets it done. Daniel Tarley here doing a little interview with, uh, with a local journo as well, so he's is a really important player from in, in terms of playing on the the uh, the tools of the opposition. Let's go and see who else we can find. You can see, just come down here. You can see the leading player manager in the business, of course, down here. Have a look. There he is. He's on his phone in the white shirt in the corner there. Have a look at the big buff head. He's standing here and he's on his phone and uh, we've been honing in on you. What have you got to say, uh, Ned, about your young fella playing in a grand final? You played in one, now he. 
Dad, about Jake. Amazing. Unbelievable. Very emotional. It's good, Brian. Very good. <laughs> He's got to say, but Rory, can we grab you for one sec? Here's Rory, who was absolutely explosive in the game. You had a ripper. Thanks, mate. So, you know, it was uh, good to win. Good to win, mate, like that. Who have you got here? Any family or are these just crazy friends? <laughs> uh, just a couple of my schoolmates came for the 100. So. <laughs> Which school did you go to, Rory? Uh, Scotch College, Science Park. Okay, and what are these guys? What are their names? Sean, Nick, Robbie, Will, Will and Lockie. <laughs> what, what was that signal you are doing there? That was the uh, good guy energy. Good guy energy. He's right into it, all these blokes. Have a look at them. We love the good guy. Good, good guy. Energy, if that's how you say it. I'm not sure how you actually say it. You can see a lot of the girlfriends and boyfriends and partners along here as well. Hugh Greenwood is here with us. Is this, yeah. is this Dad? Yeah, it's Sticks here. Yeah, it's old man here. Don't these two look alike? Have a look at the bonces on these two. Gee, you look younger than him. I am. What's your name? Um, everyone calls me Sticks. Sticks. And uh, you're proud of your son, Sticks? Absolutely. Incredibly proud of Wow, look at you two. And, and what do you think? Yeah, it's all a bit surreal. Mum's bawling her eyes out, so I've got the keys for her, so I shouldn't go sit in the car. But, um, no, it's, yeah, I mean, two years ago, I never thought I'd be in this position. So, uh, incredibly blessed, incredibly humble, and very excited to be a part of this footy club. A ripper first year for you. I think you played 13, 13 games? And 14, yeah, I think so. A couple of rests, too. <laughs> and you weren't happy about one of those rests. You really didn't want to, as a young player, you just want to play every game you can, don't you? Yeah, that's right. You want to play every game you can, but at the end of the day, you're not going to argue with the coach. As long as he puts you back in the next week, which he promised me, I, was, I wasn't complaining. So it's all worked out for the best. Well done. Thanks, mate. Cheers. 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 Well done, Sticks. Thanks, Good on you. Cheers. Have a look at those two. Talk about pee in a pod. Un absolutely unbelievable there, as we can see here now. And uh, might just go. What's the, uh, who's this young fella belong to? Uh, Max. It's my wife and I. How old's this little baby? Uh, five weeks. Give us a look, look, look at that. That is bliss. Grand final there, as you can see. Just here. It's Jake Kelly here. We might just uh, tune in here. Jake's just in his jocks. What's your name? Who are you working for? Uh, Lee for AFL Media. AFL Media, fantastic. What, what are you asking, Jake? Uh, I just asked him about his great season he's had after not missing and obviously not playing a game last year. So, Are you comfortable when you're interviewing a player that's almost in the nude? <laughs> Speedos. Speedos, but Jake, put some pants on. Oh, I was getting a shower, so... It's all about keeping an eye level, BT. Jake Kelly there. Interesting, uh, interesting stuff. Daniel Tullo over here. All right, we might, uh, we might go over he he here now and see Steve-O. Uh, have a look at Mark Soderstrom standing over in the background, our main man here. Here he is, look. You look like you want to say something. Just in a sentence, sum it up. Uh, BT, very excited here. This city is going to go mental over the next week, no doubt about that. Mark Soderstrom. Uh, and very elongated tonight, he was. So does, let's get over to Steve-O. What do you got for us, Steve-O? See, well, I do have some pants on, which is a start, and yes. I'm feeling pretty fresh as well. Hamstring for Mitch McGovern, I think, is the big story. I don't think he's going to get up the inside mile. Is that yeah. Once he did the hammy, he knew he was gone. And Otten, I think, has known. He said since Wednesday, I think... Mail is even since last Saturday that he was playing, so you'd think that Mitch McGovern's going to be the heartbreak story, BT. Won't get up uh, with that hamstring. The other highlight tonight was that hit in the second quarter. It wasn't Sloan on Dangerfield. It was massive. Some of the social media people are actually saying Sloan might be in trouble for this, which is ridiculous. Really? The ball was there. I mean, it was... Uh, Let's have a slow-mo here. That's... Uh, oh. I mean, he had to go for the ball, didn't he? It went past him. But, that, uh, is, that is just defending yourself, defending putting your yourself, arm up to uh, protect yourself, I reckon. No problem whatsoever. Of course, Danger got up and played on. Not an issue at all. News at Geelong, of course. Daniel Menzel, BT, his future up in the air. Didn't have a great game tonight. It was OK the week before, of course. One year extension on offer at a cut rate. You'd think he'd go somewhere else, perhaps to Frio. And you mentioned Motlop during the uh, telecast as well. He has to be in doubt as well, you would think. What about Ablett? I'm hearing that yes. on Monday when whispers. trade talk starts, that that deal is basically done. Well, the whispers are it's done incognito, Brian. Yeah. Uh, undercover, if you like, and maybe some framework has already been set in place. And there will be an announcement very early in the trade period that Ablett to Geelong just about done and signed off, Brian. Just a little story tonight. It's, it's not that newsy, steve -o, but... Um, Jake Kelly lives with a board member over here for Adelaide. Patrick Dangerfield arrives in the state, sends his wife and their newborn baby George to live with the board member who also lives with Jake right. Kelly. The baby cried for 24 yeah. hours. Jake Kelly, no sleep, thanks to Patrick Dangerfield. Adelaide board member, what's he thinking? He's giving oh, Geelong a chop out, Brian. Move on. And I've just had a mate text in. He's tried to get a flight from Adelaide to Melbourne Thursday, Friday next week, Brian. 
all booked out. You cannot get on an airplane uh, to Melbourne. To, you're going to have, have to drive. You're going to have to put extra flights. You're going to have to drive like the Otten family, BT. Absolutely. And, uh, sad news with Lonigan. He's uh, retired, obviously. He can now eat as many sausage rolls as he likes. And I'm sure he'll get stuck into a few jumbos tonight, right? Well, big night, Steve. -O. It's just electric down here. It the is. feeling is fantastic. They haven't shied away from it. We've let everyone in the rooms, haven't they? Yeah. And it's been it's a really good feel about it. Leighton Hewitt in the rooms, too. His son, Cruz, a gun tennis player and a handy footballer, Brian. Yeah, and of course the Adelaide Crows have been wonderful in letting us in. Ian Shuttleworth and the media team here, you can see them all doing their job very, very diligently in the background. Thank you to the Adelaide Crows for being the most accessible club in the competition. I think we're done, Steve-O, you've got one we're more. We're done, that's it, Brian. Back to you guys. Steve-O, BT, thanks for bringing it all to life for us. Thank you. Great night. BT, I mean, does Rome without any real uh, journey, but he gets to all the destinations. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. No Tom Tom. No. But he did give us a good feel. I mean, Hugh Greenwood's mother's going to go and have to sit in the car and just cry by herself to console herself. And Craig Kelly, who we know pretty well, he's as tough as they come. Mm. He's holding it together, but almost in tears. I mean, so many uh, people have been on these journeys with these kids. Mothers, yep. fathers, uncles, brothers, siblings, girlfriends, partners, coaches. It's yep. means so much. And exactly. moments, moments of doubt those players would have had over their journey. Jake Kelly didn't play a game last yeah. year. Well, a lot, of those, and a lot of those kids have moved away from home. So, you know, it, it is. It's an emotional time. And they realise that their children are about to play in what they've, they were born to do. In Spent their life trying That's to do. It. exactly right. How good was Sticks? Hugh Greenwood. Stat. Who's younger out of the father and the son? <laughs> Dead ringers. Uh, Charlie Cameron. There's rumours that he's going to play elsewhere. Uh, the Crows might have to just sort of get a bigger checkbook out. He's the man we're looking at from a Telstra Tracker point of view. We certainly are, Hayne. We've had the Telstra Tracker on him and five goals tonight. Brilliant here. But this is just how, why he had such a good night. His work rate at speed, oh. the ability to break the lines, almost 30 k's an hour, getting it over the back of. Rocky Henderson there ending up with a goal. He was brilliant tonight and some of the distances that were covered were just absolutely huge. Mark Blitzales as expected, big K's number one, but alongside Zach Tui, Dan Menzel as well. And a little bit surprisingly, Geelong players, four out of the top five there, but maybe they were just chasing so much and scrambling because this one here for me was the big one. Eddie Betts, 33 sprint efforts. That shows how much work he puts in off the ball at high intensity, at high speed to end up the great player that he is. Stevie Motlop did a lot of that too for the Cats, which was really good. And Charlie Cameron featuring as well in that top five group for sprint efforts. It gives you an insight into why Eddie Betts is so hard to play on. Yep. Because yeah. he's at top speed a lot. You're going to go down and speak with Tommy Longing and Andrew Mackey. Two phenomenal careers come to an end. Yeah, really sad the way it's ended for them. Uh, great careers and different careers, Andrew Mackey. Uh, Obviously drafted from South Australia as a skinny kid and never put on an ounce of muscle in his entire career. And Tom Lonigan, just a wonderfully courageous journey, losing a kidney, looking like his career was done and fighting back to have a great career. I will go down and have a chat with them. They will be absolutely flat. They'll be shattered with tonight, but uh, great of them to be able to offer up their time and have a chat in their last AFL game. Argument, Duck, that Tommy Lonergan has been the most courageous AFL player for a decade. Yeah, and didn't stop him going, did it? He's, he's been a great player, as has, uh, as has Andrew Mackey. Uh, great, great guys, uh, fantastic players, and they'll be, uh, they'll be sorely missed at that footy club. Let's get to the smiling coach, Don Pike. Thanks, Ian. Don, this was obviously two years in the making for you. Was, has there been a stage where you actually felt that they, they lost belief or has it always been there that they could get here? No, I think it's, it's built over the two years. I think you know, there, was, there were times even this year, early in the year, where you know, we were playing, um, playing some good footy, but it probably wasn't as complete as we would have liked. And uh, Great credit to the, the players, um, you know, the, the work they've done. Um, as I said previously, you know, the connection they've got um, allows them to perform like they did tonight, which is, which is fantastic. And, you know, the, the atmosphere tonight, incredible. You know, 53,800, you know, Adelaide supporters. I couldn't hear, you know, the guys on the bench when I was trying to talk to guys on the bench. It was that loud and, and we kicked the first two goals and it was sort of reverberating through the coach's box. So, uh, massive thank you to all of our fans and supporters who've, who've, who've turned up tonight and it's, you know, uh, it's, I know it certainly gives the players a, a significant lift and you know, creates a wonderful atmosphere for the playing. You're a lot of talk about. You're probably a little bit concerned with obviously the 15 day break coming in. 
Jeez, you must have worked wonders whatever you guys did last week then with that training session. Yeah, well, look, I said, as I said yesterday, we were really confident in the preparation we'd had and we, we thought we'd trained to an appropriate level. Um, but, you know, the start was fantastic. Our guys' ability to jump out of the blocks and really get pressure on the ball and win our share and, and obviously hit the scoreboard pretty significantly early. Um, got the game flowing the right way. Geelong came at you in the second quarter and yep. you managed to hold firm a late goal and then you just must be thrilled with the second half. Yeah, look, it was, you know, we'd, we always expected they were going to come at some point and, you know, we were sort of, uh, I think it was nine to one, nine goals to one, at, you know, midway through that second quarter and then they kicked three or four in a row and, um, you know, you, you know the danger of, of their side with the quality of players they've got. So, you know, we were always mindful that they were going to have their moments and I think it was important we, we kept the scoreboard ticking over, which, you know, allowed us to maintain that sort of buffer and, and then the second half we, we grounded out, yeah. So, Don, is that complete or do you think there's even more left in them? I think we'll continue to... Well, look, we'll learn from today. There's some things today which, you know, I would, I would already look at and review and go, look, we need to tidy some of those things up. Um, uh, there's no such thing as you, you're never going to be a complete a complete side. You've, you're going to still keep working on things individually, collectively. Um, you know, we've got ourselves in a in a great position um, to play for a premiership, and that's ultimately at the start of the year. That's that's what you aim to do, and um, you know, we've still got some work to do there. So, what do you think is significantly better than what we thought was very very good at the start of the year when you were six and zero? Um, I look, I think we've you know, probably found different ways um, in terms of winning. I think early in the season we were, you know, we were able to score quite heavily, and, and that was you know what got us in and won us games of footy. Um, I think now we're probably more even around. We can score in different ways. Um, you know, we can, you know, we can sort of play at different levels as well. So um, yeah, that's all part of the learning. That's what you learn every week. Every game gives you that opportunity, and tonight's no different. There were, as I said, there's some things which we did really well, um, and there's some things which we'll keep working on. Um, now we'll get it, you know, only got one week to uh, to worry about those things, but uh, a lot of positives out of tonight. That one Talk week, is it enough for McGovern or is it a road too long for him now? Well, we'll give him every chance. We'll give him every chance. I mean, he's, he's, he's back, he's running to a reasonable level now and, um, you know, clearly he'll have to, he'll have to do some, some training at some pretty high level this week um, for us to feel comfortable taking him in. But, you know, um, I spoke to him just before and he's in you know, a real positive mind frame and he's, he'll, he'll give himself every chance to play. Have Cameron, you had time? Uh, Don, I mean, they're made for grand final day. That, that you are. Oh, look, they're, they're, they're electric. And again, our, our whole group is not relying on, you know, tonight it was, was Charlie Needy contributed significantly as well. I think Josh kicked four. But, you know, we've, throughout the year, we've, we sort of, we're not trying to rely on one, one guy to hit the scoreboard. Um, you know, and yet they, they do a lot of other things around there. And Charlie hit the scoreboard really well tonight, which was pleasing. But, um, you know, really even contribution again. And as I've said all year, that's, that's when we play our best footy, is when we get a real even spread of contributors and... Um, and that's across all the phases. And when they do that, we're able to, you know, a maintain pressure and b when we win the ball, uh, move the ball pretty efficiently. I know the game's only just finished, but uh, have you had time to think about how you approach next week? Is do you allow the players to embrace the the occasion or how you? Look? Oh, I think you have to. You know, I've, I'm fortunate I've been there before, um, and you have to. It's not a normal game. It's the reality. This is the last game of the year. This is where you're playing for um, for the premiership, and it's a, it's a different week. Um, but you embrace the excitement of that week. Um, and we'll go through some of the, the, the logistics of the week and what it looks like with our players early on, and then we'll concentrate on what we need to do, which is play a game of footy and win a game of footy. And that's um, that's how we'll approach it, which will be no different than the other game, even though it will be a different game. Um, but it's exciting. That's that's what we play for. These games are what we play for. Well, the bond between the players, obviously the club's been through a lot over a long period of time. How's that bond, how much has that played a role in your success this year? Well, I think it's... it's Probably a little bit of the bond, a little bit of just how they've matured as a group. Um, we do a lot of things with our playing group, which is around not only educating them how to play, but you know a lot of work in the in the space whereby how they how they build relationships with each other. Um, and so some of that's through past events, and a fair chunk of that is through things we've done in the recent times, which has just allowed them to um, probably give more of each other to each other, um, and that helps build trust. And ultimately, that's what I believe is important in winning big games of footy is, is trust between people that they know that the guys will, will get their job done. Your midfield's been maligned. Um, they said, you know, you're a Patrick Dangerfield or a Bryce Gibbs short. Yep. Uh, those guys, Crouches and Atkins and <coughs> even Seedsman and Slater, of course, all stood up on the big stage tonight. Yeah, and that's, they're, they're a proud group. You know, they, they, you know, they've worked hard all year uh, and they've grown throughout the year as well. Um, 
and again tonight, though, their, their energy and their, their pressure around the ball was just fantastic. Um, but again, there was, it wasn't like it was coming from one or two sources. It wasn't like Sloan had to drive it all. It was across the board. So um, even you know, Huey Greenwood comes in and plays his role. So, you know, it's a, as I said, that's the pleasing part. When you, get a, you know, when you get a real even contribution from all our guys and they play the way we know they're capable of, um, well, I'm just super proud of them. Were you quite happy that? Oh, yeah. yeah, look, it's you know, all finals are gonna be are gonna be tough to win. And tonight was no different. We we knew we were in for a, a contest. Um, I think to our guys' credit they jumped out really well. Um, and we're able to then, you know, hold it off. But you know, it's next week will be a different game against you know, another quality opposition. So um, as much as we're pleased with tonight, you know, again, making a grand final is not what it's about. It's actually about winning the grand final. And that's what we now set our sights on doing. Well, yeah, that's that's more important. Sorry, Don, you had a lot of success as a player, yeah, premiership success. Do you feel well, any different about coaching? Well, it's different coaching mm -hmm. because, you know, the reality is, you know, I, I guess the players do it. You know, we, we're here as coaches, and, and myself and our coaching group, we, you know, we try and educate them, we try and train them, um, we show belief in them, um, to let them go and do what they do and, and do it as well as they can. And, and sometimes the challenge in this, this time of the year is to, is to not, to not overcoach, um, is to actually, you know, they, they know it. If they don't know the game style now and they don't understand the, the ways we can adapt to the game, then we haven't done our job. And, you know, sometimes the coach, you want to give them more and more information, but that's sometimes not helpful. You know, it's better just to get out of the way and let them play. Um, and tonight we had a pretty simple focus, uh, a few simple key points, and they were able to go out and execute those based on what we've done in previous weeks, not specifically on what we need to do tonight. They understand what, what creates winning for this team and you know, they, were able to, they were able to execute that tonight, which is great. How much does a moment like tonight prepare them for the sense of occasion that Saturday will be when it's... I mean, you know what it's like, that last yeah. day with that biggest crowd. Yeah, that's that's the reality. I think you know, the guys will go to sleep tonight, put their head on the pillow, and know that next week they're going to play in front of 100,000 people at the MCG. That's a given. So there'll be no surprise when we run out there and there's 100,000 there. So we, we will expect that. Um, but it's 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 you haven't experienced it until you've experienced it. So as I said, it'll be it'll be a game of footy. It'll be a different week. Um, we'll embrace the week and we'll prepare um, as we always do to come ready to play and perform. Were you happy that Dangerfield started an attack? Because it's Obviously, gave you the opportunity to, to get that upper hand in midfield. Or? Uh, we, we, we prepared for both, and really, that was that was Geelong's decision. You know, we, you know, we could have tossed a coin whether he was going to start in midfield or start forward. Um, but you know, we had plans in place for both, and um, we're probably more focused on what we need to do from a from a midfield viewpoint and, and try and get some early field position and scoreboard <coughs> pressure. And, um, as I said, the, you know, the the crowd early was uh, was phenomenal in terms of their, their support. And once we kicked a couple of early goals, it was, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have wanted to be in a Geelong jumper when the, the crowd was up and about. It was, it was a great atmosphere. You mentioned Greenwood before. I saw you carrying an injury. You'd no. Game time, but no. No. Sorry, defensively, in terms of the way that you handled back a few early and the job that Tali did on Hawkins, how pleased were you with those two roles? Yeah, again, another two examples of guys that just played their role. I mean, I thought, I mean, Hutto's, we know he's got some speed and obviously the strength to match someone like Dangerfield, so I thought early he was, he was good in that space. And Tali was really solid all night, I thought. I thought he... Uh, you know, against the weight of a fair few inside fifties at times, I thought he, he held up really well. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Just for that local guys. Don's been there before as a player, first time as a coach. Remarkable to think for all of the players, it's going to be a week that no one's experienced. So it's all new. Yep. Night to dream tonight. A week to dream, but a week to get it right. Yeah, exactly right. And I, lo I love the fact that he said you, you do it. As much as you try to say that uh, you know, you've got a plan as if it's any other week, it's not. It's grand final week. You have a parade, you have a lot of stuff going on. And, and I know as silly as it sounds, you've got cousins, you've got everyone ringing you for tickets. Yeah. So it is a very different week. You do have to embrace it. But at the same time, um, you know, enjoy it. Remarkable. I mean, I know we've spoken about it. The opener from Leighton Hill was terrific, but Phil Walsh passes away. Dean Bailey passes away. They lose Jack Gunston, Kurt Tippett, Nathan Bock, Phil Davis, Patrick Dangerfield. Yeah. They've just won a prelim final by 10 goals. Yeah. And, that, and that word, resilience. Yeah. And uh, that was spoken about in, uh, in that opener with Leighton Hewitt, and that's exactly what this club is. And, and uh, it's been an almighty effort to get where they've gotten to given all of those things that you just mentioned. And they don't have a top 10 draft pick. The other thing that uh, Don Pike was great on was the more we give of each other to each other, yeah. the more we trust each other, the better the relationships, the bigger the bond, 
better the club. I love the fact that, you know, he said, you don't have to overcoach. I mean, he's, mm. he's, he's done a remarkable job. I mean, this is his second year yep. and they're into a grand final. So he has to take a fair bit of credit for where this club sits. Absolutely. So brutal prelim finals. Win and you uh, get this extraordinary week and this great prize and a great yep. opportunity. Lose, you're out. Yep. And, and that stays with you until you get another opportunity, uh, you know, of playing finals footy again. You don't forget big losses like that. Yeah. Time for a break. He'll wrap things up on the other side. Rory Sloan, he'll join us on game day. Belinda Sloan, his wife, is going to be hosting the Brownlow Metal Red Carpet on Monday night. So it's a Sloan fest. Sunday, Monday, big opportunity for Rory on Saturday. Wrap things up on the other side. Fifty-three thousand and change, a record at Adelaide Oval. So it's seven days and fourteen hours, and Adelaide Crows will be playing either the Tigers or the Giants full house. And tomorrow night, well, it's an opportunity for the Tigers to get through to the grand final. Next week, if they do, they're going to have to stop a side that is scoring heavily, full of run and dash, and a side that's not put out. The Cats fire very early. Six goals to one in the opening term. At one stage, they kicked seven in a row. The Cats kicked four of five, got it back to 26 points, but then it was all the Crows again. 61 points in the end. And one of the most fascinating parts of the night, Doug, was the national anthem. For the second final, the Crows took a different stance. Yeah, they did, and you can see there. I mean, that, that is a... And we've spoken about it already, but that's a deliberate thing. And then stayed in line that little bit longer. Tex Walker took a step forward. So clearly that's something that uh, sort of almost like, you know what, their preparation, we're ready. They'll do that next week? Absolutely. What happens if the other team doesn't move? Well, they're going to have a stare-off. <laughs> Can you imagine? How long do you stand there? It will happen next week in front of 100,000, of which the bulk will be Richmond fans. So Richmond have seen it twice now. Once against the Giants, once against the Cats. If you think if they, they will they hold, win. Yeah, let's, they win. Yeah. or the Giants, or the Giants, yeah. will they hold firm? Um, yeah, I would have thought so. Although once the national anthem finishes, and if they've stayed there too long, then they yeah. might get a little bit of a boo. If, <laughs> if it is, if it is Richmond. Yeah. Okay. They've got to ball the ball up eventually. Yeah. <laughs> now, Steve, I mentioned earlier that Rory Sloan and uh, Danger collided. Is there anything at all? No. At all. No. No. Two players totally committed. Yeah. To going at the footy, and Sloan committed the tackle initially. It's just a great collision in football that we have. Short duck, nothing. No, no, zero. No, absolutely nothing. It, no. If anything, I know Danger was the one that came off second best there, but Sloan could have quite easily come off sec second best as well. I mean, it was front on contact, front so on clearly contact. there was no deliberate going for a bump. Yep. That's just them going for the footy. Rory Sloan is playing going in the grand the final. Yes. Rory Sloan is on game day on Sunday. He'll be playing in the grand final. Belinda Sloan hosting the Brownlow. Uh, just on uh, Richo, he's the one I'm most concerned about <laughs> right now in Australia. How do you reckon he's going to sleep tonight and call tomorrow? Will well, not sleep. Given that he's got a little baby and, uh, in Richmond, <laughs> uh, not a lot. Righto. Hope you enjoyed the footy. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Lingy. Uh, prelim final tomorrow afternoon, 3.30, it kicks off. Charlie Cameron, brilliant tonight. What an opportunity. What a week they've got ahead of them. The Crows versus the Tigers or the Giants at the MCG next Saturday. Tigers or the Giants tomorrow on 7.